virtually every one of the top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. The psychedelic jackets on the record albums have their own hidden symbols and messages as well as all the lyrics of all the top rock songs. And they all sing the same refrain. It's fun. This is a special request. Special request. We don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. We want you to smoke the real thing. We want you to smoke the natural herb. Some call it marijuana. Some call it sense media. Some call it lamb's bread. And some people call it... Welcome to another edition of the Adam Dunn Show. I am your host, Adam Dunn. And I'm your co-host, Mitch Shinasa. And the kid is over here with yeah. his with his new dog. We the dog, Duke. the kid and the dog. The kid we and the dog. Got, we got Duke sitting in the Duke in the and the kid. Seat, you know, Duke and Destro. Nice. Yeah, we are having our pre. This is our Christmas Eve special edition mega. F- Whatever I don't know. No. It's the Adam Dunn Christmas special, holiday special. It's the we really planned a show heavy, a lot of planning. Heavy this. Christmas, a lot of planning. Well, today we're talking about what the holidays are all about, which is. Family. Family, family and miracles. Family and everyone and miracles. has stories about cannabis and their family or stories about cannabis and miracles. And we figure you guys have some great stories. We have a couple that we could pull up. And uh, Ryan is smirking because he promises he has excellent well, stories. Well, no, no but they had nothing to do with cannabis. But I mean, I had a- Oh, I have oh, stories hey. about my family. Great. No, about like, I mean, a miracle. I was hit by a car. I saw an angel. I was dude. hit by a car, too. For real. So for real. Was it a snow yeah. angel or a real angel? No, it was a real <laughs> angel. <laughs> you got thrown into the snow and you saw- It was an angel, man. Was it? Yeah. Was it in Christmas time or was it? It was real. Was it Christmas? No, it wasn't. It was summertime. So it has really like, nothing to do with anything about Christmas. Like, uh, no, you were in shorts, miracle, you got hit by a car- Right, I mean, this guy's a I, I hardly see the Christmas Christmas connection. No, no <laughs> cannabis tie-in. That's for no, sure. No, no cannabis tie-in. And then what happened with this angel? Tell us. So I, I got, I was in, you know, I was on my car, or I was on my bike. You're on your car. That's a bad bike. start. You should not be on your car. And there was. Yeah, you're not hit by a car if you're on <laughs> you your know, car. A, you fall off road. it, then you fell off a um, car. The, but the, the road that I was on was it was a hill. Uh, and it's getting was way too complicated. Cross road. I got hit by. I got hit by a car. There you go. And <laughs> I get to the point. Saw an angel, and that was that. And then I passed out. You sure it wasn't an ambulance no, driver? Because, no, because when I woke up, I remember being in the hospital room, and I remember seeing that same figure in my door when I was in the hospital room that I saw when I got hit by the car, because wow. I like, can barely remember. So wait, there's this, there's this <laughs> figure who's trying to kill you. Yes. It, it was probably death, I mean, to be completely honest with you. Really? So, yeah. Death you're, like, you're one step ahead of death. I, I, yeah. I'm, Man. Uh, yeah, skills. The kid's got skills. The story sounded a lot better. One step ahead of the devil right there. Not bad. All right. You want to do some news? Since we're like late anyway. supposed to be, right? All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. New Orleans Police Department have arrested a man who had marijuana shipped to a neighbor's apartment in Lakeview. This is a cautionary tale. Yes. Saturday, December 20th. a sure he's home. That's the most important part. A tenant living in the apartment received a package in the mail that contained over five pounds of marijuana in vacuum-sealed bags. Pro job, judging by the picture. The resident notified police. So, yeah, don't ship it to your neighbor, guys. Just don't yeah. ship it at all, but, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, don't. don't well, definitely it. don't ship it to your neighbor, especially if they're home, because they're not going to give it back. All right, here's one. You want to do this one, Adam? The Denver shelter saying that legal marijuana is attracting more homeless to the city. Great. Well, that's, I mean, that. Amsterdam all over again, right? It's sort of the same as, like, where the weather in Florida attracts homeless people. Because and old people. They come down there and they say, wow, this is way better than in Philly, you know? <laughs> and then they don't go home. It's whoa, of- whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, Philly, sorry. Yo. It is way better than in Philly, though, man. Those people in Philly, like, here, people come up and be like, oh, man, you have a couple, you have a couple cents, or, you know, you have a nug I can get. In Philly, they come up and be like, give me your fucking money. And that's that. Because they're so. cold. They cold, son. They cold. Oh, Chris on the phone but, in but, studio. Uh oh. It's okay. There's a holiday named after you. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> You're it's allowed okay. to do whatever you want on today. Uh, so Chris <laughs> Easterling was sick of relying on drug dealers in Minneapolis, Minneapolis when he needed marijuana to help ease the pain of multiple sclerosis. They were flaky, often leaving the homeless man without the drug when he needed relief the most. So he moved to Denver. So uh, this is t- talking about even homeless people who have medical needs moving to Denver to just make 
access available, which uh, I think that's something we've sort of seen even with medical for a while now. Everyone's checked out. No one's talking to me. All right, another yeah. story. Adam. I was, I was, I'm trying to send out messages here. Police. Okay. Three-year-old brings marijuana to school at Head Start yeah. in Fayette. Oh, oh, see, that's just, that, is what I, that is what I've been saying since the beginning. Pennsylvania, Ryan. It was this in Pennsylvania? Where? Uniontown, Pennsylvania. This kid, Union is, this kid is destined to, to become a real stoner. <laughs> he's into, you know, he's into just, show and tell already. He's into show and tell. So mad, I tell you, show and tell. That's where you got to watch. State police say a three year old girl brought five baggies of marijuana oh, to school God, Tuesday damn, in five. North Union Township, Fayette County. The child handed a bag to her teacher at Head Start on Cool Spring oh, Street. Man, don't go right to the teacher. The teacher <laughs> and ask the teacher to hold it. <laughs> you know, it just. Uh, <laughs> Trooper <laughs> Stefani Lucas said. At that point, her coat was searched and the rest of the drugs were found. The investigating trooper on the case is preparing a complaint to charge the girl's mother with recklessly endangering yes. another person. Yes, please. I feel like there was no danger. No. I gotta say. All right, right. Okay, but listen. So although there's no danger, it would no matter what she no matter what she could have done with that marijuana, unless she put the bag in her mouth and choked on it, could it have killed her? No way, Fair shape, enough. or form. However, how does that look? To everybody else and to us, to our, like, you have kids, you wouldn't want Farron showing up in the school when she gets a little older with your weed, because how would that make you look? How would you smoke weed if your kid has all the weed? You can't do that. Well, here's my, I think walking up to the teacher and being like, yo, hold this. I would tell them, yeah, just teach them not to do that. That's that a bad, bad Yeah, well, at that point, I guess you should teach All right, them here's some it, news but, for you. Oh, fuck. Oh, I wish Crunchy was here. Is it me, or does this guy look a little like Crunchy? That could be Crunchy. It's not, and you guys are racist. <laughs> But back down in Louisiana, Opelousa Snowball Stand busted for selling marijuana. A snowball stand? Two nice. Opelousas men were arrested for selling high-grade hydro marijuana high grade. from their – Hydro in quotes. High-grade hydro. From their high snowball grade stand. Hydro. Why, what? The St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office Narcotics Enforcement Team arrested Jermaine oh. Doucette, 32, and Bryant Fields, 32, at T&E Soul Food and Snowballs. Crunchy was just talking about opening – a soul food place today. Investigators said the two men offered a special dish of hydro marijuana. The stand was located within two separate drug-free school zones, which led to more charges. Hydro is the street name for marijuana grown indoors and allows more nutrients to be added to the plant to increase the tetrahydrocannabinol hy- level in the marijuana, making it potentially dangerous, investigators said. No. That was all like really smart until the last two words. Potentially dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now yeah. it doesn't look like crunchy when you get cold. That's the other guy. It's a different guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I could, now you're really <laughs> racist. Now you're, now you're definitely a racist. Are they, are they all black next quote, next quote, yes. Next yeah. quote. Dealing drugs from a snowball stand inside a school zone is disturbing on many levels, Sheriff Bobby Guidro said. dirty as hell. Oh, and the kid just knocked over the mic. Tra- mic drop. <laughs> the kid. Man. Okay, here's Man. good news. Here's not good news, but this is interesting news. The kid. Jackie Chan's son charged for drug offense in China after marijuana found in apartment. Not a good place to be getting caught. No, but here's a picture of Jackie Chan with him. The kid looks high as fuck. Yeah, he was high. Flargles. He's got Chinese eyes. Fl- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the races episode, see? 32-year-old son of actor and kung fu star Jackie Chan has been fa- charged with a drug offense and could face up to three years in jail where I bet everybody will want to fight him. Oh, yeah. The Supreme People's Procurer, Procuratorate said it. That's what they call lawyers in China. Procuratorate. Studio door wide open thanks to the kid. The kid is out of control with it. So the Supreme People's Procuratorate said in a brief statement on Sina Waibu, a Chinese microblogging site, that it had begun legal proceedings against actor J.C. Chan for the crime of sheltering others to take drugs, which sounds like an opium den oh. crime, you know? Shelter. Chan, who's originally from Hong Kong, is one of the highest profile celebrity offenders caught in Beijing's clampdown down on drug use in the city. He was arrested alongside 23-year-old Taiwanese actor Kai Ko, in August this year, the pair were detained by Beijing police during a raid in Dong. They raided people. Both men tested it positive for marijuana, and police later found more than 100 grams of the drug. Oh, my God. A after searching Chan's apartment. He had a cuper. Damn. Wow. They were targeted. Uh, a 72% increase in cannabis arrests, it looks like, in China, or drugs in general. They're not really de- well, separating them. Crystal meth party. That's somebody... Someone had a crystal meth party. A sure. crystal meth party. 
Jackie Chan is extremely furious and extremely shocked uh, at the news of his son's arrest. Did he use the word furious? Does one of his movies have furious in it? I think it may. Jackie Chan publicly addressed the incident immediately after his son was arrested oh, in August furious. on Cena oh, Wide Bill. He said he was extremely furious. Did he do like a backflip in front of everybody? At the, at the news smash of his arre- son's arrest. I love Jackie Chan. My mom loves Jackie Chan too. I think he's such a shitty actor. I think he's I can't, I can't, not I know, about the I think acting. He's funny, man. Like Rush Hour. I think he's a, hysterical. It's terrible yeah, acting, but it's it's just so funny the way he it's, says stuff. Yeah. Not that it's hey, racist. Hey, it's hey, just hey, funny. Hey. Yeah, he no he 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 takes a comical He said he side takes for responsibility for the drug charges. I wonder if he got his son smoking. Smoking. Does Jackie Chan smoke herb? I don't know. That's what we're finding out. He said uh, he was extremely shocked. He was heart. His mother was heartbroken. He says he hopes that young people will see JC as a cautionary tale and stay away from drugs. Yeah, because what's the, and, and then tell us what happened. He got in trouble. That's that's with a cautionary tale. I failed to teach my son, and I should also bear responsibility. JC and I bowed. Deeply bow in apology to society, he said. Oh, deeply bow. You know, that's, that's real shit, man. Once you deeply bow. Dude, he will come for the shit out of you. Pistol packing pot smokers Colorado campaign would guarantee marijuana users gun rights. There we yeah. go. Yay. Sweet. Good. Denver. Colorado was the first state to legalize recreational marijuana sales. Now the state's voters may consider a ballot measure to allow pot smokers to carry a concealed firearm. The Colorado Campaign for Equal Gun Rights is working to put a question on the November 2016 ballot to have Colorado ignore guidelines from the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives about firearms and pot. The measure would change state laws to prevent sheriffs from denying concealed carry permits because of marijuana use. It's a new frontier in the marijuana wars and one that has divided gun rights activists. It's just ridiculous, said Edgar Antolin, one of the campaign organizers, who argues that firearms aren't kept from alcohol drinkers. Somebody can get extremely drunk Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and all week if they want, and they can still get a concealed carry permit. He said he and his campaign partner, Isaac Chase, who run a firearm training business called Guns for Everyone, are reaching out to gun rights groups that support for support, including those involved in last year's recall of two state senators who supported stricter firearm laws. Colorado organizers need more than 86,100 signatures to send the question to voters, and it's unclear whether Antelon's campaign will get enough to support enough support to launch. Well, it's an easy one to to um, shoot down. To Are you going to say shoot fight. down? Yeah, yeah, it'll be an easy down. one to shoot down. But I don't understand why, because I mean, a I, I'm mixed on it though, because I I'm totally for concealed carry. However, I don't necessarily see the purpose of it. If we, if you can have a, an open carry, and I can have an open carry, and you can have an open carry, and you can all see that we have guns. Why do you need to hide that you have your gun? Why why can't you just have it on your hip? Everybody then knows you have it. Because so nobody's gonna. Wouldn't that release or, or relinquish you can't ever some of wear it? a jacket over it? Concealed carry, like it, you have to be seen at all times. Right, if it's open carry. So. I guess. I mean, just concealed carry. Like you have to. You you can't just like have a gun on you. You have to like. Right. Be, I, have I it brandished. Yes, it has to be in a holster, complete, clearly visible. Yeah. I understand, but I mean, I just I, well, concealed that, carry I think, is just always where it gets a little. I think scary. open carry is definitely more deterring. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for what sure. I mean. Like, like you I walk have into, my gun. You walk into a, a, into a liquor store and the guy is all little dude. He's got a huge gun on his hip. You're done. Pretty it's much done. nobody's robbing yeah. that place. You know you what I mean? If you to... don't know he has a gun on him, right. you might try to rob him. So, right. but I, the concealed carry, so, I don't really find it necessary because if everybody knows you have your gun, it's only for if you're at if it's a, if you're at a job, you, you can't have a concealed gun. You have to have your gun. You know what I'm saying? You right. Well, never mind. <laughs> okay. But, I'm going to go... Colorado problems. Yeah. Right, seriously. Colorado problems, big time. Big time. Uh, let's give out the phone number for folks who want to call in and share some stories, ask questions, really whatever you guys want to do today. It's kind of grab bag, loose format, holiday style. Uh, yeah, phone, phone number, number 720... Yeah. Hey, 720-381-1420. <laughs> and I did want to say, if, you, uh, have, if you're waiting on any giveaways that you haven't received... Go on Instagram. No, and I wait, want you no, to don't, talk. Don't you dare! I'll give out your phone number on at, live. I'll give your phone number on live air the second after you say my Instagram tag. I was going to say message at the Adam Dunn <laughs> Show because Ryan has the password and login to that, and he will check. Harass it. me on there. However, I am passing all blame. Everybody who is blaming me for your tests needs to start. Oh yeah, everyone's talking people. about the one more uh, have, news thing. I think it happened after the show last week. So, oh, because uh, we are no. You mean now the that we two are, states suing. That's one thing, but also Colorado. the fact that isn't it funny how we've been all waiting for them to sign off on this whole like leave us alone with hemp and and medical marijuana, and it happened, and 
no one seemed to care. Like they're pretty sure like, we covered it on the news last week. No, Cody. I don't think so. Yeah, we it did. happened right after. It happened right after that. And it, no, but I'm just telling you, I noticed that it was kind of like slipped through. Like, oh, by the way, else you can just do whatever you want. Like, really? <laughs> That's pretty big news, actually. That's pretty big the news. The hemp side, the hemp side, more than the medical. Medical is obvious because that just had to happen. Dude, no one's <laughs> watching the show. Nobody? Murphy Murray's watching the show. Really? Nobody's watching I'll shout show? out people watching the show. Red Eye Joe's watching the show. Shout out to Red Eye Joe. Thanks for the emails, buddy. I'm actually looking through the chat list. I got a new computer, guys. Uh, Snake Vitus is watching the show. Uh, who else is watching the show? Murphy Murray, get in studio. Stop watching the show. Anyway, not a lot of people watching the show. No, it's because no. it's Christmas. Everybody's with their fams. It's Christmas. You should be listening uh, to this with your family. This is family this radio is today. We specifically family. made it <laughs> a family, family radio. friendly program. Fuck balls. Today it is. Shit. Today it is. <laughs> 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 All right. You just right ruined it, dude. Fuck her right in the pussy. Yeah, fuck her right in the pussy. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, from the nobody who's watching the show, call on in, 720-381-1420. We're just chilling. All right, Adam, tell us a Christmas story. Christmas stories? Ooh. Um, you got to talk about Christmas do, stories. Do, 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 do. Wait, do you good. tell? Oh, well, we <laughs> could talk about Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, that would be a good one. About what? Most Sinterklaas? people don't know about Santa Claus. I do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, racist as hell. This is how racist Dutch people are. Yeah. Ryan, I'll show you a picture. Santa Claus is Santa Claus in, in Dutch. Oh, uh, they yeah? do, they do a Clay's blackface? Yes, they do. Yeah? Yes, they do. Uh, blackface in no way, shape, or form is ever acceptable. No. He says, they hilariously make, laughing. Well, they make a funny, sunny episode of well, that. Thing about Actually, Santa Claus, the thing about they, Santa Claus is, is like, it's kind of weird because when I first went to Holland, I was in such shock, dude. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Because it's like they walk around and they've got blackface and and afro wigs and they're the they're the elves, you know. So 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 these people that have black faces on right now that's, the that's called Svart de Pete are Pete. white. Black Pete. That's Black yeah. Pete. Yeah. It's Black Pete. And they paint themselves black. He's Santa Claus's slave. Santa Claus's slave. Well, they don't say slave. They're their helpers. Right. Why are they black? Because they're, they're Moors they from Spain. No, actually, because they go down the chimney and then they so. get black from the chimney. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the well, that doesn't sound so racist when you add the I'm story. Pretty with sure it. they're Moors from well, Spain, and, though. And then their hair gets curly and their lips get big. And no, that's a little racist. That's, all that's racist. really racist. No, it's it's terrible. So basically, when I first got there, I just was like, "This, this is un." Believable, you know, and <laughs> yeah. What was your like? Did you expect anything? How was it? you just go out on Christmas? Is it all? Because I've only been it's, there. For it's th- before Christmas. It's on the fifth, right? So it's uh, he comes in on the fifth. He rides a white horse. He comes in from Spain, which is really weird. Is so. it the same guy every year? Yes, it's the real Santa Claus. It's real, the real dude. Yeah. What's his name? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah, he's real. What do you mean? It's, it's not the same guy. It's an actor playing it's a, Santa Claus. It's right, yeah. but it's the same as our. It's the same. It's the not same, the same like, guy. No, but they have a big public ceremony. Right. And then he comes to the different towns, and he'll ride through the town. Are you serious? It's all coordinated. One guy does this town by town. Well, there is multiple. Or is it like ones. a coordinated? There's multiple, multiple ones, Santa Claus. But there's the main guy. Like there's like the one that everyone's watching. You know, the first. The really? First, yeah, because he comes in on the very first one, and then, well, here's a good story. So one cannabis cup. We went to pick up everybody. We had a London bus uh, that year, and we went to pick up a bunch of people at the airport. And so we had the whole bus all packed up with people. And uh, first of all, we broke down on the way. That's classic, right? Like at the bottom of the tunnel, at the very bottom, bottom, going down under the under the uh. canal. They break down at the bottom. Had to go wait, get it fixed. Finally, get it fixed. Come back up. We go through this town and. We didn't realize it, but the center class was like right behind us. Center class. It sounds <laughs> like you're talking about. So the way you just said that made it sound like you have like, uh, uh, like a dinosaur chasing you or like some creature. <laughs> we didn't know it at the time, but the center class was right behind us. So basically, <laughs> so basically, we're in this bus, and it's loaded with all sorts of people uh, from high times, and we had all their security guys, big black dudes from security, and we're as we're riding through town. Because we're in a big red bus, so they see the big red bus and assume that that's Santa Claus, even though he was behind us in another truck or something stupid, right? <laughs> and so everybody in the town comes running out, all yeah, Santa Claus is here, and and then I couldn't see it because I was on the bus, but I can imagine it. Every guy and girl on the bus had their face like plastered to the window and was like, 
what is going on? Like they couldn't believe it. And and then they saw the Smart to Pete come out and they were like, hell no. <laughs> like, what is it? This is so racist shit right here, you know? And I was just like, no, this is what they do. And I was trying to explain it. And it was like, they were just like not having it, man. Wait, they so were, you're, you're stuck there broken down? No, we actually, we made it out. We made it into the town. But it was like the town was just filled with people waiting for Sinterklaas. So when we came into town, we thought we were we didn't realize like why is there so many people out? To, oh, it's it's the fifth, you know. And then we realized that he was literally a hundred meters behind us, coming up behind us, and yeah, it was hilarious. So it was like one of those weird moments in time where, like, they really thought we were Sinterklaas. We didn't know who the hell they were or so why they were there. Are there? Does every like town have its own Svartapits that run out, or the, oh, yeah. the official Svartapits? And they run around Amsterdam. And the thing that's funny is they throw, uh, they throw like candies at you, like kind of violently. <laughs> like they don't just give it to you a candy, or they right. throw them at you. So it's like you'll be as they come by, they'll be just whipping them at kids. And psh, whack, and, and the thing about Svartapits. So here's here's why it's really messed up and racist. Because if you're bad, he beats you up and throws you in a sack and takes you away. Takes you down to Spain. Yeah. So they beat you up. They toss you in a sack, and then when this is the this is the, the myth. But I saw you, you know, so you're good. So you're good kid. So you're good you kid. don't get on Santa's naughty list. There's no law naughty Santa list. There's like, his, his black ho- like, security guard beats you, you up and throws you in a bag. Yeah. You in bag. Do yeah. they have the running of the Santa Clauses like they do here? <laughs> no, <but laughs> that yeah. would be awesome. The alcoholic Santa Clauses. Well, I mean, you've seen thing. like the running yeah. of the Santas, yeah, yeah, right? It's hysterical. They should do the running of the the whatever those. Blackface things. Smart to Pete. Yeah. So anyway, now what's happening in Holland is there's been a lot of protests because it's getting way more ethnically mixed. It always has been, but at the same time, it was really strange there too because you're talking about the majority of the of the black population in Holland is from Suriname, and that is a former slave colony. So you're like thinking, okay, these guys are former slaves, and a lot of them didn't seem to care. Oh, yeah, dress my kid up, and you're like – how are you not getting there? How are you not play seeing? Along, how are you not seeing this? And it's just but because it's been going on for so long, it just became normal, you know. And that's kind of where things happen. That's how a lot of things happen. Is if it's been going on for hundreds of years, the average Dutch person doesn't see the racism, doesn't understand why we're all worked up over it. But coming there as a foreigner, it was like, wow, this this would never happen back home, you know. And the majority of the- <laughs> what's going on? Sorry, here? sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> We had to watch our own show? Yeah. Damn. We're having all sorts of technical oh, issues. Man, it's called New Computer. New Computer. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, the, living there for, for a while, it was definitely uh, good to see the people finally waking up to it. Now they're now they what they do is they want everybody, they have them Rainbow Pete instead of Black Yeah, Pete. I saw that. So you have Multicolored Pete. You have so now Blue they're making Pete, fun of gay people green. instead of black <laughs> people. Yeah, a little, little, little across the board. Across the board. Right on. All right, guys, call in. Help us make a show happen today. 720-381-1420. Give us a Christmas gift. We want a Christmas miracle. Ryan, so you want to tell a family story? You don't have a good family cannabis story? I I mean, I do. Last, uh, last, I think it was last, it must have been two ago, because I was here last Christmas. Two, two, two Christmases ago, you came in saying that you hate the Festivus thing. My family does the Festivus thing. The week end before Christmas, we all, like, decorate the fucking, the pole and do the Festivus. And uh, uh, we had, I don't know what they were cooking. Seinfeld or something. Yeah, is it is it just because they're big Seinfeld fans or what? Well, yeah, it, it started off like that, and it's not even that they're big Seinfeld fans. It almost started as like one person was a Seinfeld fan, and it was a joke. So we did the whole we did we used to do the party the weekend before Christmas. And then we just started calling it Festivus, and then somebody brought a pole. Decorated There's a to lot make of Festivus like stuff out now. It's yeah, crazy. it's crazy. It's nuts. I know. It's but like really, we I need to make a holiday like that. I know. Told we already did with 420. We didn't personally. Well, yeah, we need to personally make. We make a personally. Does Seinfeld get paid holiday? for all those Festivus no, things? No, no way. They're killing it right now. Crushing yeah. it. It's not copyrighted. But I, wow, uh, this sucking. was before I moved to Colorado, so it was still, weed was like, my parents knew I smoked and all that, but it was still like, don't get high around your family and all that shit. Don't get high around the pole, about the Festivus pole? Yeah. Was so, that like a big deal? Uh, so of course don't I mess showed up, up. Don't mess around the Festivus pole. Ripped, like ripped as shit. And my aunt was, we were all sitting eating dinner oh. and, and my aunt starts choking, right? So I mean like choking and she's like, okay. Did you start, then, la- did you start laughing? Well, the, no, oh. no. We all look at her and then we were like, oh, are you okay? And she didn't make any sound. And then she like, started shaking her head. No, again, and she stood up in a panic and it's choking and it's choking and, and nobody can do anything about it. They're all trying to give her the Heimlich and it's not working. My high ass gets up, one squeeze, bam, save my aunt's life. Christmas, uh, miracle, miracle, cannabis. Done. Done. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I was high. And that's the show. The now you can drop the yeah. mic. Yeah, 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 drop the mic. Put it up. Put it up. <laughs> you knocked it over before. That was good. Yeah, you already knocked the mic over. That's one. one. So that's a good one. Good yeah. job. That's a good good one. job. We could do a Hanukkah tie-in. Yeah, you need to do that. Well, because you know, you know that the miracle of Hanukkah is that there Mar- was posed, Mar- Moses part of the sea. No, that's no, totally well, separate. Stop it. So the the, the Hebrew, <laughs> the you know, the Hebrews defeated the Greeks in a military victory. What? Then, oh yeah, you're Greek. We oh, should totally yeah, reenact yeah, Hanukkah. Yeah, what? Yeah, I, I How do know. we not do this? How did that come around? Uh, there was the Maccabees, and we took out. We had three hundred dudes and took out like a whole army. That everything. was Persians. You beat the Persians, yeah. and then we got you back with the with the uh, Hebrews. We're all weak because yeah. we're all weakened from the. Yeah. Oh man. So, yeah, so wait, so what's the story of Hanukkah? So like, there was a military victory, now. but then afterwards, his filthy people had desecrated the temple, so he had to clean it up. <laughs> they were like doing their their dirty Greek stuff in there. Dirty Greek. So, we, so part and a lot of awesome the, a lot of tatsiki off. sauce and yeah. like yeah. banging. <laughs> yeah. Breaking oh, plates, oh. throwing plates, tatsiki sauce, action, sweating. Yeah, a lot of sweat. So we had to clean the place up, Pepsis, and then a lot of we had to burn oil for eight days as part of the consecration ceremony. But there wasn't eight days worth of oil. There was only enough oil for one day, oh, but I the bet, oil lasted, lasted right? eight days. That was like that oh, movie man. on Disney Channel with that Jewish kid who wanted to play basketball, and then the game was going to win, and there was only enough oil left in the generator because he was Jewish. It lasted the whole time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is that a real thing? Oh, it was a real movie, dude. It was, they it was, made the miracle <laughs> so, of So uh, this kid was, was really smart, and his dad was a doctor, and he wanted to play basketball, and he was really good at basketball, but in the last game, right before his team could win, the generator was almost empty, and the power went off, and the like, kid went out and like, shook it and there was only a little bit of oil in there but it lasted th- the rest of the time for him to play the game and do all that stuff because he wow. was Jewish. So that's kind of like the miracle of Hanukkah. Uh, miracle well that's it. The miracle so of I've the generator the of Hanukkah. But to me yeah. I always find whenever like my dabs last longer than expected miracle yeah, of Hanukkah. I always think about Hanukkah. <laughs> now nice. what is is Reese Jewish? Reese is not Jewish so, and that's why we have Christmas. That's so why you now, only get half the dabs. Is Farron going to get both. Hanukkah she gets both. and yeah. Christmas. Yeah, but, yeah, but she so both. she's gonna get eight, essentially she nine. Already got. She got a present. You guys gotta switch then, up though if you really want it to be proper though, right? Cause no, no you don't yeah. alternate. You do both. No, but you're the dad, right? So so what? So Mom what you say goes, and that's how it is. Jew, no, not that anymore. Work? Not anymore. What do they change the rules? Well, yeah. yeah so I mean, like, what is her? Like, what is sense. she gonna go to? Is she gonna go to like church? Do either of you guys go? to No, the church that's now? the thing. Reese isn't like not really like practice, yeah, like yeah, really yeah, practice. So. Me, me I, I've totally forgot. I was gonna have you bring in your yarmulke today. I thought you have put a on your and yarmulke. And I wear a Santa Claus hat. I might have one on. And I was gonna. You might have one on you. Oh man! I definitely had one in my secret pocket for my Christmas. Oh, I get a home on a car. <laughs> no, but I want to get this. Do we have any Santa hats here? Loads no. of holiday toys. <laughs> <laughs> the girls from Marukas Hall and all three Beastie Boys. <laughs> so you said Hanukkah. You gotta have some Adam Sandler Hanukkah songs. In there, you know? <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh, the kid. Man. Winona Ryder. Uh, kid, what are your family's hot? Like, what do you guys eat for Christmas? We're, uh, yeah. We do like the ham thing, like the whole ham, and then like my I've never steak eaten and so the crab Line cakes, busy. all that good Why shit. Is Why is call line busy? There's nobody calling. Talking to Chris. Chris calling busy? No. Murphy says she's been trying to blow it up. Answer the call. 720-381-1420. Jam the phone line. What day? What day is Kwanzaa? Murphy, you calling the right number? Does she even know what to call? (laughs) 720-381-1420. So we have Hanukkah covered. We have Christmas. Christmas. What about Kwanzaa? Like, what is what is? I don't know. I don't know. What really about what you were talking about? What about Kwanzaa? um, what's that one? What the evil one? The Krampus. 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 Yeah. Krampus. The hell is that? Kramp- like Scientology? Krampus is Krampus a German. Is, Krampus is nuts. Is a German. So the family guy? Christmas myth. Yeah, yeah that's like, how I learned about it. If you're bad, <laughs> I was like, Krampus is a devil who comes and beats you with a <laughs> stick and throws you in a sack and takes you to hell. It's a combination. So of pretty the much truth. the same thing as the Amsterdam one, except you go to hell and not Spain. Yeah, which is I like the same Spain. thing, <laughs> <laughs> according to them. Well, what's the what is it? It's it's uh, is it France that does the 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 shoe and the candy, right? You leave your shoe outside your door with, and Saint Nick so comes. So that puts is the interesting. Evil. What? Or coal if you're bad. Yeah, but like you, you leave get, a coal out. Coal? No, no. Like you go. I remember yeah. doing it in French class. Like you put your shoe outside of the classroom or so outside of your bedroom, and then for the reindeer, you leave like sugar for the reindeer, right? I don't know what you do. That's what it's sugar for the reindeer. Or whatever, yeah. And then the Christmas morning, it's like filled with candy it's or it's from filled with coal. The Norse, going back to Yule, 
Right, we could talk about your family's Christmas because he's your Swedish. Yo, they yo, have yo, yo. Uses, guys, families. Use guys, use guys, use guys, use families. No, <laughs> you all. talk about <laughs> Jesus' family. Is the the Scandinavian Christmas Just right? Because you guys killed fucking Jesus, don't you? They so try to flip everything back on. You guys did kill Jesus. You did kill Jesus. <laughs> said Mel Gibson. Said Mel Gibson. Said Mel Gibson and pretty and much Ryan. everyone on South and Park. Ryan. Yeah. So and Ryan. And Ryan. I'm glad that perspective has been yeah. aired on our show yeah, now. Yeah, I'm yeah. She passed me the cross sack 19 times. Just <laughs> killed Jesus, man. <laughs> this episode is off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> episode 60 yeah. something. A lot of cannabis information. ADS <laughs> off the rails. <laughs> yep. All right. Give these guys some weed information. Now. Tell everyone how to grow pot. That's it? Oh. Christmas pot? Lights. So, well, first of all, you, here, well, Christmas now, and you know cannabis what, you know have should, a lot in common. They now, need lights. They smell they the same food. sometimes. I Christmas. love, uh, isn't it weird, though, how when you harvest around Christmas time, that weed just automatically starts to smell like Christmas. Like, like Christmas? You're, you're just like, there's Christmas weed. I don't even know what it is, but it, Christmas weed? It's weird. I'm going to harvest. Experience. We're going to be harvesting like a couple days, like right now, pretty much. The next really? Days. The Christmas tree bud. Yo, I'm trying to come up there and get some get some work done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> that was not a good, not a good look. Not a good look, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, it was really way too relaxed. You were not working hard at all. <laughs> like cross legs, like all pain, not paying attention. You did a terrible job. Is anyone uh, calling seven two zero three eight one one four two? I don't know. Maybe That's maybe our can. calls. Are, maybe so many people are trying to call. It's just are the phone like lines they're, broken, they're exploding into each other. We're going to reboot Skype. Can we call him ourselves? Oh, my God. Call call Don't call him. Can we call do that? Just call it. The circular call. Do it. Sir, well, he's call? rebooting Skype right now. I'm so not going to call it. I don't so, uh... Let me give you a topic to talk about. Oh, I, had, I had a great topic. Okay, okay. what do you guys... Let's talk about what, what are you guys this doing? Friday at Boxing Day. Well, Boxing Day. Too. Boom. Oh, yeah. There Boom. you go. At Green Labs this Friday, we're going to have Boxing Day, which most Americans don't know because they're not... Dicks. A, yeah, Selfish. They don't, they don't like to give away anything. They just like to. They think it's about boxing up your stuff to bring it back to get your money back to go buy more stuff. <laughs> it's not the same. No. I've but literally never even heard of this day. Exactly. Before, well, so. Canada celebrates it, and England celebrates it, and a lot of you know. Did the, they celebrate it in the Netherlands? Mm, no, they have second Christmas Day though. It's sort of the same idea. Same same tradition. You get a day off, pretty much. You know, like here it's kind of weird. Like you, you know, you get like you're back to work. You're like, well, wait. I just had Christmas and it's Friday, you yeah. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me go back to work, but uh, so this Friday, second Christmas Day or Boxing Day or whatever you want to call it, we're gonna. What should we call it? Gonna, this is our new holiday. We're gonna, we're changing it up. What are we calling it? CB uh, Day. CBDB Day. CB CBD Day. Day. We're basically gonna give away um, CBD cuts and seeds and uh, have people linked up with patients directly with growers and try to like make everybody's lives a little easier this next coming 2015. And I want to add in, I actually uh, was thinking about it this morning, we should give away with that some of those full lines of nectar for the gods so people oh, can sure. grow those cuts. For sure, we still have a few I was, boxes. I was in uh, a grow big supply the other day. I never really looked at the nectar of the gods like they hooked it up, man. That stuff is, is an expensive product. It's, it is not a cheap product. It's a quality cheap. product. Quality. They put a lot dense, of stuff you can tell when it, yeah. it's, like it's got a good density. It's not just yeah. water and yeah, salts. Right. Yeah, right. Like mostly water with a little bit of food in there. Yeah, no, no. And uh, so I know there's probably like 15 people listening right now in the chat room, it looks like, because we're not uploading. Oh, that's another thing uh, to so announce. Murphy's at the Green Labs. There you go. Good job. Murphy, good come job. on down to the show. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. But uh, Boxing Day this Friday. Will be CBD get CBD Family Day. On the Red Bull to see. CBD, CBD, CBD. What about the Red Bull? Everyone's like, Dude, Ryan's ripped. <laughs> Ryan's ripped. Someone's been in the Red Bull. Oh yeah. 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 Nine yerba mates later. Nine yerba mates later. <laughs> I did go buy a case the other day. Hey, how's our yerba, how is our yerba mates situation going? That's yeah, because we're we're really low. needs to be updated. It'll, it'll be, be updated. Needs. It'll be refreshed in the new year, and we'll have cans back in effect, and we will not give them all away at parties, and we will have them for every show. Oh, good. And, and Ryan will not just drink nothing but those for days on end. Yeah, that, right. that still happens. I just like I said, I went out and bought a case at Walmart. So yeah, Walmart carries yerba mate. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. So well, anyway, uh, this definitely. Friday we're going to be at the Green Labs, which is 1250 31st Street. and uh, 1250 31st Street in Denver. It's oh, the yeah. day after Christmas. Might as well Christmas. be in Denver. Too. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to go to the, the day after town. Christmas. You probably have off work. If you know someone who could use some CBD, not so they can make some money. This is a strictly gifting situation. Yeah. yeah. But so it can help them, help you, what have you. 
then please hit email adam at adamdunshow.com. Don't email me. I will email back the people who emailed me, but I'm not going to be there. Adam will be there. So email adam at adamdunshow.com. What strains do we have, Adam? Um, I brought the, uh, let's see, R4, the Harlequin, Juliet, and then I guess ACDC and some new stuff from Seed that uh, 2 is going to bring on. Nice. So, so hopefully, yeah. uh, and then uh, hopefully some other surprises out of nowhere. You know, we'll yeah, see. Well, I don't know if we've talked to Mike West. Juliet. I said Juliet. Yeah, you said Juliet. Our, I don't even know. That one I've actually not seen growing, but we have a bunch it's of clones. Yeah, I think he says yeah, Juliet. There's an R4 up there too, isn't there? R4, R4 Ju- Juliet, yeah. Harlequin, ACDC. Um, They're good too because they help. I, we do we should hit up uh, Dave from Elite Genetics, right. our O Genome sponsor, because I know he's got a bunch of unique CBD cuts that maybe he can contribute. I know mm-hmm. he does have CBD oil that he wants to contribute. Um, so you should definitely reach out to him. And Angry white him. guy, I need to talk to him. Angry, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, that Bodhi's Good Medicine is a good cut to get. It uh, seems to have like every cannabinoid detectable in it. So, all right, uh, let's talk about – what do you want to talk about, Ryan? What do you guys – what do you – I mean, like, so I, I was – I was. Yeah. I just called it. Okay. All so right, so guys. Lines are working. Yeah, lines, lines are, are now working. working. No 720-381-1420. What are you guys each doing for, for, for dinner and stuff tomorrow? Oh. Tomorrow dinner. Well, you know, I should be making my cyber turkey as I normally would, but since turkey? you're not coming, I don't know if I want to do it now. What's a cyber? I wouldn't have eaten tofu tofurky anyway. It's not tofu. What's a cyber turkey? It's corn chicken patties. Yeah. Which is a myco protein. So it's mushroom. Protein. It's mushroom. It's a hike. It's awesome. It's so awesome. We're having a goose at our house. Ryan's so asking this because he's trying to figure out where he should go for Christmas. Well, and it's like, a, and it's hey, because oh, I, I want to go down to Aces too, but it's so far, so and I could go up to Mitch's with, and leave the dog. And that's the other thing: the dog. I since I now have the dog now too, I can leave the dog because I don't want to bring him in. And of course, you can bring him to Aces. Piss Freddy I love that we're no. just treating this episode as a conference call. This is great. Yeah, this is conference call time. Of course, you can bring your dog. It's a farm. Farms and dogs go together. Bring him out. Bring it better on. than babies and dogs, to be honest. Yeah, it would be rude if you couldn't. That's true. Well, you can't, by the way. No. <laughs> Everybody else. Hey, what's that whole thing about Christmas and mushrooms? Do you guys know that whole? Oh, yeah. I told you that story already. What? No. Tell me that story, Adam. Come on now. Um, so uh, Jack Harar basically wrote a book. <laughs> there you go. Wrote a book, uh, which came out pretty recently, I think. It took him a long time to, to put it together, and I think it came out after his death even. Um, and he correlated mushrooms with Santa Claus and with traditional things. And it makes a lot of sense because, you know, you obviously have the Christmas tree itself, which is a pine tree, which, well, where do mushrooms grow? They grow around pine trees, you know, and they literally grow in a circle around pine trees. That's like the the classic. So if you imagine like in the middle of nature, you have a tree and around the bottom of it, you have these mushrooms growing that people would go out, leave the kids at home, go on their little missions, find these mushrooms, come back with all sorts of stories about elves and fairies and colors and flying sleighs and flying reindeers and all everything you think about when you start thinking about Christmas. It's all pretty magical. Uh, and pretty much if you're up in the middle of you know a place where it's dark for three, four months <laughs> out of the year straight and you're drunk as hell on reindeer piss because they eat the mushrooms – and then they drink reindeer piss with the mushrooms. Oh, we do have a color. Nice. And so it's pretty amazing stuff. I found a little more. Yeah, I found a little more about that, too. So. Good. Uh, caller, caller, what's going on? Hi. Uh, my name's Tanisha, and I was calling. Um, I'm part of, or I'm not part of, but my son is receiving medicine from TJ's Garden. He's epileptic. Oh, nice. Out of and I hope that I could call in and talk about his story. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Really. Love to talk Thanks about for that. calling in. Yeah, so... Um, so my son is eight, and he What's your he was son's diagnosed name? with I'm epileptic. Sorry. What was that? What's your son's name? Uh, his name's Forrest. And uh, so just after his eighth birthday, he started having seizures, and he was diagnosed with epileptic. Um, it was kind of a crazy roller coaster, and we had put him on uh, some pharmaceuticals for a while, um, and they made him um, suicidal. He, he grabbed a cleaver, and he tried to stab himself in the stomach. And it was pretty much one of the most um, awful things I've ever seen because he's eight. You know, he's a little boy. 
so a friend of my family's had said, have you guys heard about cannabis for, for epileptic children? And so I started doing some research online and there was so much information. Um, and he had paired me up with PJ's garden and come to find out they, they were offering, um, no cost cannabis for, for minors, for children. So we put him on it. Um, he's been on it for just over a hundred days and he has, he's, he hasn't had one seizure. That's wow. not a single seizure. Wow. That's what, amazing. what form is he taking it in? Um, he takes it in oil and gel tabs. Initially we were putting it in his mouth, just dropped straight into his mouth. And he said it tasted a little, a little funny, a little musky, you know, it was kind of, kind of hilarious. So we put it in gel tabs. So there was like no flavor, no taste for him. Um, he takes it three times a day. Uh, there hasn't been any side effects. He hasn't tried to kill himself. Uh, you know, it's been wonderful. They've been so helpful because I'm, you know, I'm in my thirties. Like, you know, I don't, I don't smoke or anything. It was kind of like this whole new, um, this whole new thing for us, uh, that I hadn't, I hadn't really been a part of. And so they've been so fabulous kind of teaching me the ropes and, you know, trying different, um, different amounts and stuff. And, um, you know, we've been really happy. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more. Um, and I, you know, I finally came out, if you want to say that to my family and my friends, that this is what we were doing. And the support has been amazing. I haven't had anyone say like, we think that you're a bad mom. Cause you know, that's your fear. Cause there's such a stigma and, you know, nobody said, we think you're a bad mom. Everybody says I would do what you've done. Um, you know, can these guys help me? I have a kid with epilepsy. And so, you know, they've been, it's been an amazing, an amazing roller coaster of emotions to say the least. So now a hundred days in, are you finding that you're connecting with other families that are seeking the treatment? Are you, I know there are a number of networks in the cannabis community that sort of support families. I don't know if you're getting in touch with any of them, but do you find yourself becoming an activist in any way? Um, you know, I am. Uh, TJ's said that in conjunction with providing us with the no-cost cannabis, if I knew of any other children um, that had seizure disorders of whatever sort, that they would also provide them. And so I didn't, I was part of a couple different groups and I didn't really know any other mothers. So I, you know, I figured it was, it was changing our lives. So the least I could do was, you know, present myself. And so I went to the media and I said, you know, this amazing company is, you know, they're curing my son. You know, if there's other parents out there, you know, they're willing to help too. Um, so we did, we did a little news story and the response was overwhelming. Um, you know, mothers calling me, contacting me, crying, you know, what can we do? And I was like, I, I know a guy, <laughs> you know, I know a couple of guys. Um, and so, you know, I've directed a lot of those, those patients over to TJ's and I think that there's been new, new parents. Um, but yeah, it's been, you know, I find myself like on the Facebook, I was liking, you know, soccer mom type pages. And now all my pages are, are very much cannabis oriented. It's funny. It sucks so, you in. Yeah. I'm sure we have a lot of f shared contacts. And <laughs> it's been, you know, it's been a, a learning experience to say the least, but you know, at the, we had given up, we rented out our home because we had been expecting to, to pay, you know, five, $700 a month for treatment. Um, you know, and TJ's like, they came in and they're just supporting us, you know, and, and helping my son. He, he used to be a dancer and he couldn't dance because he was seizing too much. And he just got accepted into a new dance academy because he's, he's stable enough. And so it's been a blessing. I had no idea that there were people out there that were just willing to help us um, just because my son was sick. And, and do you know, uh, and do yeah. you know, and do you know by any chance, like what the ratios are that, that that work for your son? Like, is there a certain uh, four to one or 10 to one or 20 to one, or is there a certain ratio that seems to help with his seizures? Well, you know, I can't speak to the specifics, um, but I know that the THC is very low, almost in the hemp category, like the point, point three, I think it is. Um, and then the CBDs, I'm not, I'm not positive. Um, so I can't say, but what we do for him is we give him CBD the, t the tabs every day, three times a day. And then if he starts to have, um, you know, symptoms of seizure, which is like aura, or he starts to get a little bit of like spacey, you know, kind of, kind of crazy behavior. Um, then we give him something with a little bit more THC, uh, because that, because if we don't give him that, then he is supposed to take a, 
a rescue medication, which is diazepam rectally every 15 minutes, I believe it is, wow. which is crazy. Yeah, that's not so, it. you know, my choice as a mother was to give him rectal diazepam or seriously one drop of a THC heavy liquid. Um, and he has not had a seizure since. And so not all parents are okay with the THC. I myself am. Um, I would pick THC over diazepam any day. And that, and that THC so, really is just helping helping that CBD to, to kick in and to take effect. I mean, you do need minuscule and minute amount of THC for the CBD to even take effect, correct? I mean, yes. you can't, yeah, so, so that's, that's good. And I mean, when you're taking yeah. it orally, that's something that a lot of people have said that it's the THC. So when you're not heating it at all, or so right. you're not smoking it, you're not right. cooking it, yeah, it's, it's the acid heated. form of THC. There's no decarboxylation right. or anything. It's, so it doesn't go through your body the same way. It doesn't turn into the same thing in your body. And that is no, is known, as you said, to suppress seizures oncoming. And it's I've never heard someone sort of just say it to me anecdotally. I've just heard it passed around, right. you know, on the grower side. So that's pretty amazing to hear that confirmed, I feel like. And now I, I, I have a question. Did you have, before you decided to, to give Forrest the, the CBD oil, have you had, or, or your husband or anybody, had any experience with with cannabis before or was it a completely new thing was cannabis the idea of cannabis in your life completely new or had had you had any experience with it like were you familiar with what it could do or were you concerned with um you know is it going to get my son high you know are you what were you thinking about when you first had the idea to to give him the cbd pills well i mean for experience in our lives you know i'm a 30 something female that i live in eugene so it's not like i'm absolutely unfamiliar with cannabis right I mean, it's been, you know, we live in Oregon. It's pretty standard around here. Um, but I, I mean, I hadn't, honestly, I, I have. I smoked pot in high school a couple of times. But yeah. it had been 12, 12 years, plus, you know, plus for, time. Right. for the both of us. It was not really something that was part of our lives. Um, I hadn't really been against it. Um, you know, some people are really against it. Or mm -hmm. um, My mother-in-law had had um, terminal brain cancer. And so she... She was consuming cannabis for her brain cancer for a couple of years, and so I saw that working for her. Um, you know, but she was an adult, right. and so although I was never, um, I was never against it. Uh, it was really a, it was, it was hard. I had no idea it was going to be hard um, for my child. You know, it was, it was scary. Um, I was never scared of it before, but when, you know, when I sat down with his first dose, I was, I was scared. Um, right. You know, because I was on such an emotional roller coaster. I had every expectation that it was going to work, but there was still, you know, an in-ground fear. But after the first day and he had no seizures and then the second day he had no seizures, you know, it totally erased my fear. And I talked to a lot of other parents um, that are so scared, you know, and, and I feel that it helps them to be able to relay that I was scared too, right, you know, and I'm absolutely. not, I was never against it, but I was still scared. Right. You know, I was scared people were going to bust through my door. I was scared you know, maybe it was different, and yeah, but there's a lot of fear. You see all those stories um, now out there that, you know, the Child Protective Services are saying that, you know, right. oh, my kid has zero seizures as opposed to 12 seizures a day, but you're going to you're gonna take him away from me uh -huh. and then put him in a place where he doesn't have his medicine and he's going to get his seizures again. Um, and you've seen no yeah. no other side effects, no other side effects from it. It yeah, doesn't make him groggy, but he's still active and, nope. you know, a good, playful eight-year-old. Not a thing. Seriously, awesome. not, one, so not one side effect. Um, he's super, he's a super hyper boy. Uh, it hasn't dulled that at all. That's good. <laughs> you know, That's good. I'm like, well, you know, um, sometimes, uh, you know, he gets a little resistive. He doesn't want to take his medication cause it sucks cause he's eight. Right. But, right. um, you know, and, uh, TJ's has done a fabulous job about providing you a gel tab so that it's a little bit easier for him, you know, and kind of supporting it. But he has had not one, not one side effect. And that was the thing the, the pharmaceuticals were, um, they were definitely dulling his seizures. He was having less, but the psychosocial behaviors that came along with it um, were so not okay where, I mean, I would rather him have seizures than, than have the side effects, suicidal side effects in an eight-year-old. Right. I mean, and that, and that really makes me wonder too. I mean, if you have, if you have an eight-year-old having suicidal, suicidal tendencies and suicidal thoughts, what, what is that eight-year-old going through in his own mind? at eight years sure. old where he can't, I mean, some, maybe some things at our age were able to say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm too much in my head right now, but at eight years old, how can you control dealing with that off of a medication? So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's fantastic that you were able to find, you know, a supplement to, 
to uh, get that terrible product out of your life. For sure. And, you know, um, I, you know, I was open to do whatever it took to help my son. And, you know, I assumed based on what doctors were saying and everything that, you know, I had to do the pharmaceuticals, but that, that was my only option. Um, and it was seriously by the craziest fluke of the universe that, you know, somebody said, I know this guy, you know, and he has this, you know, if, if you're thinking about cannabis, he, they'll help you. And I said, there is no way that somebody's just going to help just out of the goodness of their heart. Who does that? Like, and they were like, no, you should call him. And it seriously took me, it took me weeks. Um, I didn't call cause I thought that that was crazy. I thought that this person was ill-informed and I didn't want to call up and say, Hey, so I heard that you can help my child. Um, you know, and be misinformed. Right. And so when I finally called, it was, you know, I cried. I, I was driving on the phone, which I wasn't supposed to do anyways, but, and then I was crying too. Well, <laughs> you know? because when they got that phone call to them, it was probably like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, yeah, we, no, we can have yes. no problem. And you're like, wait, 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 really? Like, no, are they're, you, they're that on simple? The right, right? They're on the right tip. And that's, yeah. a, that's the good thing about this whole, um, the effectiveness of this plant is that, for a grower like TJ's or any person who's out there doing professional growing, I mean, you, you, just your residual stuff that you don't even need is enough for most patients. You know, they don't need massive doses. People always like over. I mean, in the beginning, that's one of the things everybody did was just, just massive dose, massive dose, massive dose, yeah. and, it, and that works, of course. But now I think as people as people start to figure out that it doesn't even <laughs> take that much, it takes this time, minor dose to turn it on and turn off this stuff, which I think that's where we got to do now is just figure out where to backpedal it to the point where we're given the lowest dose possible with the mouth, you know, still be effective, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think in the beginning, it was just like raw and, you know, everybody just threw it at it, you know, just as much as possible, as much as possible. And, and, and because of course there's no overdose and there, you know, the, 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 the the worst effect is you're going to be really sleepy and sleep it off. And then usually during that sleep off phase is when your body's repairing itself too. So it's actually, yeah. Beneficial both ways. And I guess he's on a, a very small dose. I'm I'm less familiar, um, you know, because they've, um, you know, I've put my trust in them and, and everything's gone so well. Like, they know more about his dosage uh, than I do. Um, I just know, you know, how often and, and what works. But I guess his dose is really small, you know, and he was having to increase his pharmaceuticals to keep the seizures at bay. And, you know, he can miss a dose, and it, it's not even a big deal. If he forgets and he misses a dose, he still doesn't have seizures because the, the tiny amount is enough. Yeah, it's you know, awesome. It's, it's so opposite of what we were doing with the pharmaceuticals, like with the rectal diazepam. If that doesn't work, you give another one. And if that doesn't work, you, will, you know, send him to the hospital. Right, and I mean, I feel like they, it's they, so opposite. they almost probably did that reverse when they started giving him the CBD pills. I mean, they, they probably thought like, hey, you know, he can he can take three of these and be fine, but he probably only needs two. Or probably, like right. you said, he can miss a dose. But take three and he'll still be just as fine as if he took two and then we'll be super sure that he's not going to have any seizures as opposed to those horrible medicine. Like, oh, here's a little bit. And then if he still has seizures, give him a little bit more and hopefully nothing bad will happen. Yeah. No, it's maybe I mean, another, you know, another pharmaceutical on top of it. Well, yeah. that one's hard. So here's the second pharmaceutical to counteract what the first pharmaceutical is doing. Yeah. No, that's when it gets. That's it's when crazy. you go down the rabbit hole at that point because you're just, you know, you you're trying to fix one problem with another. And yeah, that's. I sure. mean, and have you interacted with any doctors since you've been using cannabis to treat Forrest? And have you spoken to his doctors about your choice and the results you're you're experiencing? Well, initially, when he started having the side effects. Um, I spoke to one of his physicians, and they said, well, it sounds like he needs um, psychological care. Um, he's eight. You should maybe see if he has a psychological disorder. And that was uh, really off-putting. I, I, I didn't even know it because he has not had a psychological disorder prior to the medication. Because he doesn't right. have a psychological days. disorder. He had, ter- yeah. They got, oh. <laughs> so I haven't, um, I talked to uh, his pediatrician. And, you know, she said, I can either condone and I, I can't say anything, but, you know, what I will tell you is I think you're going to be okay. You know, because there is still, you know, especially when we work for big, big doctor's offices, there is, you know, they, they're not allowed to say a lot of physician's offices that are part of, you know, a big group or whatever are not allowed to sign for your card. Um, they're not allowed to do any of that stuff. So how I took it, and I could have totally perceived this wrong, was, you know, I agree with what you're doing, but I can't for my own sake. I can't say yes or no, but I think you're going to be okay. You know, so, um, you know, it's it's hard because 
here in Oregon, we have to go to special clinics for, for especially for children to get legal. Mm -hmm. And so you don't get to work, you know, directly with his pediatrician. Um, you know, they can know and they can, you know, kind of be a part of it, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's a hard thing. So his doctor knows, um, and you know, he's seizure free. What are they? That's what I mean. How can you, how can you hear that story? Okay. You guys gave him medicine. He tried to kill himself at eight years old and he still had seizures. Uh And now I give him cannabis and he does not try to kill himself and he does not have seizures. Uh, (laughs) How can you not mind? Ryan Ryan the robot. You're making the wrong decision. (laughs) Exactly. How can you hear that and not be like, oh, well, I mean, all right then. So my question then is, have any of them asked you for more information or are they, you know, showing any interest in, in seeing the results right before their eyes? Um, no, no that's <laughs> to put it bluntly, no, um, they will. you know, I, I assume in due time, um, and I bet you that some of them know, uh, I mean, how can you not, how can you live in this world right now, right now and like not have somewhat of a clue, especially as a doctor? I mean, maybe, maybe need, I'm shooting for the cash, stars with that need one. need a cash but. incentive. That's the problem. <laughs> no, yeah. I found myself talking to a doctor, uh, like a really, you know, well-recognized physician, respiratory physician, whatever. And he he asked me, he's like, is this, is it really real? Like he had heard it, but in no detail. And then I sent him, I, you know, sent him some links and educated him a little. And he's kind of blown away. And now that he's read some studies yeah. and it's really changing his mind. And he's not the sort of guy who used recreationally or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I know I'm happy to do that with my family, especially some of the older people in my family. Um, you know, trying to tell my grandparents. You know, I have my eight-year-old son on cannabis. They're losing their minds. Like, they're losing their minds. But before I told him it was cannabis, I said, you know, I have my son on this new medication. It's fabulous. Just never said cannabis. And they were so excited. And then, you know, you tell them and they, like, you know, step back a little bit. Um, But this has been a a very good learning experience, not only for me, learning from PJs, but then taking the information and passing it on, you know, to different people in my community and in my family, um, you know, it's, they're little tiny waves, but I feel like they matter. You know, they'll, you know, if you're changing somebody's mind just a little bit, like, I feel like that matters. Yeah, it definitely does. And, and it's I, harder with the older, it's a harder with the older generation just because they're the ones who really got duped. You know what I mean? We, we all kind of like right. saw it, but you know, some, some went for, you know, some of us, you know, fought the fight still to bring it on. Other people just let it be and didn't care anymore. But their generation, it was like really like a anti and like you know very small percentage of people using huge percentage of people not being into it and kind of taking it to the grave almost you know and and so it's hard, it's hard to it's hard to admit you're wrong you know that's definitely one one of the human nature and yeah, for sure and so are you seeing the are their opinions changing and softening in general or they're still scared? like my family still hasn't completely accepted it yet so you know and i i obviously you know, don't they, have, sorry go ahead. ahead no no please go ahead uh, uh, you know, they go back and forth. They're really excited that, you know, he is himself again. Um, but, it's you know, I've, I've tried to talk to him about it. Like, one, a member of my family was like, well, as long as he's not on the kind that's going to get him high, you know, then, then I'm all for that. And I had to say, you know, we have THC as a, as a rescue medication, um, you know. And, and so everything was fine until I said, you know, the THC, which they understood, you know, can create a high. Um, you know, and then you step back a little bit and then I said, but you know, it's that or this, you want to see this vial? I mean, you know, yeah, diazepam like, is okay. definitely gets you probably a little altered state as well. So it's not like yeah. a drastic uh, sure. improvement. That's what I mean. And if you look at the biff, if you were to take uh, a jar of, of THC tincture and a jar of whatever that vial of the terrible medicine you had to give them to, and we struck the ingredient labels on there. I mean, like what? Can- cannabis and and then that's it and then the, uh, god knows what is in in all that medicine that that makes them have you know terrible terrible side effects yeah well i mean yeah. that's i mean that is definitely the uh the waking up of america i think in the next hopefully the next five years or so is with with a- with access to cannabis more people can get off of the prescri- that's kind of what we were talking about in the last few weeks get off the prescription uh, prescription pills and see a different possibility especially when they're young especially when we're talking about kids because i think the the key to the cannabis is is the fact that it's letting you know letting the 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 natural defenses of the body work properly instead of just blanketing them 
and then everything just sort of stagnating, which is what it seems like with most farmies do. You know, they kind of they pickle you in a really weird way. You don't want to be pickled at eight years old. You know, I mean? that's not a good time to be pickling <laughs> right? yourself. You know, because you're not going to you know you're not going to become a, a happy person if you're if you're already unhappy at eight years old. It's, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, and it's yeah. I think it's funny because we when we were talking about today's show. You know, I said, Adam, today's show, it's the holiday show. It's about families and miracles. And he said, how are we going to do a cannabis show about families and miracles? <laughs> but I think I think what you just hit it on the head, uh, you know. And I'm wondering if there are other families that you've spoken to. I don't know if you know about our event that we're doing this Friday. She's in Oregon. but I know. So I don't know how many people she, she speaks to. But this Friday, we're doing an event out here where we're going to be giving away CBD medicine, uh, oil, as well as uh, cuttings and seeds to anyone in need. So if you are connected oh, wow. with anyone in Colorado, um, we'd love to be in touch with them uh, for, for the day after tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I'm um, part of a couple different uh, parent groups. And so um, I'll look around and see, you know, if anybody there's in Colorado, because that's, that's amazing. Um, I know that with TJ's, you know, they're, they've told people, you know, if you, if you want to try it, we'll be more than happy, you know, more than happy to just let you try it. If that's what you need. Cause you know, not everything works for everybody, but this tends to work for most kids. Yeah, it really um, does. It you know, really it's a crazy does. gift. Uh, it's absolutely given us, you know, the gift of life within my son. Although he wasn't dying, per se. Um, you know, like, you know, the, the standard definition of dying. Um, you know, he was dying emotionally. You know, he wasn't himself. And so cannabis... Well, just it's dealing with that. like a gift of life. Yeah, and dealing and, with know, seizures at that age is already like, that's your right. quality of life is not it's, good, it's you know what I mean? So that's, yeah. that's, that's For sure. so awesome to hear that he's uh, living seizure-free at this point, which is great. Yep, 100%. I mean, not a lot of people get 100%, and so, you know, I don't mean to to boast. That's not, you know, what I'm trying to say, you know, because a lot of kids are getting 70%, which is fabulous. Fantastic. Um, but he's at 100%, 100 days and 100%. Wow. Um, it's been amazing. amazing. That's amazing. It's, it really yeah. is a miracle. And it and it's, I think, like you said, it's like the nail in the coffin. It's that last, that last thing to be like on top of, on top of all the evidence that it's not harmful, by the way, it's better than your mm-hmm. traditional medicines at fixing so many of the problems that we face all the time, you know? And yeah, prior, sure. prior to the cannabis, was there even, you know, what were the treatments available? Was not, not just to you, but in general for Forrest's condition? Um, for epilepsy, so generally they'll start with pharmaceuticals. We did a ketogenic diet, which is a very high fat diet. It actually caused, it worked, but you can't keep an eight year old boy away from cake if you don't have your eyes on him constantly. So while it worked, it was, it was not something we could sustain. Um, and once he falls out of ketosis, then it takes up to three weeks to get him back into it. Um, so there's a diet very hard, pretty, it works pretty well, really hard, um, they do vagus nerve stimulators. So they put an implant in his neck, and it stimulates a nerve that oftentimes will um, kind of keep seizures at bay. A lot of the mothers I talk to have had their, you know, one, two, three-year-old kids on 20 different medications. Medications are generally the, the go-to. Um, honestly, there is hemispherectomies that they do for epilepsy. They take out an entire hemisphere of the brain. Wow. Well, that's not wow. the case for my son. His is not that severe. Um, it happens. It's totally a procedure that does happen. Um, half and, the brain. And so I wanted to ask, are are you connected with other uh, families through like epilepsy networks? And in, in those cases, are you seeing a lot of questions or, or comments about cannabis? Um, yeah, I'm part of a, a couple different epilepsy parent cannabis. And so a lot of those parents are already using it. Um, and what I see the most in there is that the parents are using CBD and THC, and we can talk about it together, but there, a lot of times they're not talking about it to anybody else right. um, because a little bit of THC is making it work. Um, or as with us, he doesn't need it regularly, but, you know, a little bit of THC keeps, you know, any potential seizures at bay. Um, a lot of people are having really good, um, really good success. I mean, you know... I would say, and this is just, you know, by my own recollection, most parents are seeing, you know, a 70% reduction. That's what I see. That's about the number that I see from parents more often than not, um, which is fabulous. I mean, 
if you've ever seen a seizure, 10 seizures down to three is, is fabulous. Absolutely. Absolutely. And have you interacted at all with parents in, in sort of like non-cannabis epilepsy forums? Um, I have, I, I had a, a family member of mine say my son, my friend, her son is, uh, you know, terribly epileptic. There's nothing you can do that they can do. Would you be willing to reach out to her? And you know what? And I do. And she had no idea. I was like, well, you know, I, I understand if you're not ready based on, you know, kind of like her location and some things I could see where maybe this wouldn't be her first choice. I could do all the research that you want to do. And if you're ready, um, you know, come talk to me and I can direct you to a fabulous set of guys that will help you. They'll help your son. You know, here's what's going on with me. And so it usually takes time, you know, go look, you know, do the research for yourself. And if you're ready, you know, I know a guy, my, my husband's um, ex-wife, her daughter's having some neurological problems and, you know, we're kind of walking through hearing about how that's going for her, you know, and if you're ready, if it's just something that, you know, you get to the point that, that you need, you know, let me know. And I, I know a guy, <laughs> you know, it's almost a joke because that's what I tell everybody, you know, that's having similar issues. I know a guy. <laughs> so, you need a card. Like the you family need a card joke. Yeah. So, so in those cases, do you ever, do you have any informational resources that you get, that you like to give people or, or do you generally just point them back to TJ's or how do you educate people? Well, you know, TJ's knows about cannabis. I guess I had, I didn't know about them because it wasn't a community that I was a part of prior to this, but I did some Googling and I was like, you guys are fabulous. <laughs> you know, there was, there was all sorts of information, I guess, that, um, that they do a lot of wonderful things and that their product is fabulous. Um, you know, but I didn't know. And so, um, when it comes to, you know, how are you feeling? Um, how are you holding up? You know, how is your son? How is your daughter? Um, you know, I'll talk to parents about that. But then in regards to the cannabis, I send them to TJ's because they know, they know so much more than I do. I can understand the emotions, but I don't know as much about the cannabis. So, you know, if I can support the parents and let them know it's all going to be okay. Um, you know, even when it's not okay, it's still okay. Um, and your feelings are valid. Um, you know, I can, I can do that for them. Um, but you know, I'm like, I know a guy, (laughs) you know, we're back to the, I know a guy. (laughs) You know, Google TJ's Gardens, like, you know, look at and see what you can find. And um, another part that was really important for me um, when we ventured into this is the fact that uh, their medicine's organic. That was one of the first questions I asked, is it organic? Because, you know, if I'm venturing away from medicine that's chemicals, you know, into even cannabis with chemicals, like I felt like that was a little bit, you know, of of an oxymoron. And so I feel like, you know, providing them with, Organic medicine that's natural is is super important. So that was definitely a big seller for me in the beginning, um, you know, because I I felt like the chemicals and the medications were, were causing so much damage. Um, to be able to get away from them completely was of the utmost importance. I've got a I've got a question for you because you mentioned uh, you know the big seller for you and one thing that I have run into um, with a few families that I know of is uh, just just the cost of their their children's health care um, and you know the cost of all of those medications like you say if one doesn't work you just get to try the next one it's not like you get your money back there's no guarantee no. Um, how how has the cost of treating your child with cannabis versus all of those pharmaceuticals um, played out for you, considering, you know, you could probably take advantage of, of health care, but... I think she's free. I think she's paying. Dude, yeah. Are you so, getting it for free? Um, we, uh, we ended up... Forrest is on the Oregon Health Plan. Um, and so, you know, that puts us that, I think, you know, that puts us in a, a median income type level. And so we, we don't have a lot of disposable income for, um, you know, doing some research and... What I had found online is, you know, there was families are spending like five hundred, seven hundred dollars per month um, in uh, in Colorado for um, for the CBD that they have available there. Give or take a little bit. Everybody's different, but we couldn't. I mean, uh, we couldn't add a five hundred dollar bill, right. um, you know, to our budget. We couldn't. We have four children, um, you know, so we rented out our house and we moved in with family. Uh, we're living in an apartment in my father in law's house because. That was our option. And actually, about two weeks after we moved here and rented our house out, they got paired up with TJ's and they said, 
you know, we'll do it, you know, we'll do it at no cost. Um, because Oregon Health Plan won't pay for it. They didn't pay for him to see the doctor. I mean, they paid for his pharmaceuticals and they paid for his MRIs and his EEGs, but they won't pay for his cannabis. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely a blessing because, you know, my expectation was we were going to have to pay for our son's treatment, you know, equivalent to, you know, just short of a mortgage, $700. I mean, in Oregon, that's just short of a mortgage. After, after losing uh, him too, that's awful. So I think a lot of people can relate to that story. And I think for the people who are hesitant otherwise to know that it is, you know, like you say, you can't add another bill, but adding cannabis might not be adding another bill for and treatment. Have you considered, yeah. have you considered taking up, uh, taking up growing any on the side to have sort of an emergency medicine stash or uh, sort of consulting with TJs to get it locally? Um, like backyard not locally? Exactly. I feel, <laughs> you know, uh, it, when we had to get our cards and stuff, I initially, because I wasn't using them, you know, you list yourself as the grower and we all kind of got a kick out of that because I can't keep ivy alive. I cannot <laughs> keep cactuses alive. So on that note, I hadn't really thought about it because it's really not my forte. Um, depending upon how this progresses, I mean, I'm happy with TJ's. Everything's been fabulous. I have no reason to, to do anything other than what I'm doing. Um, you know, he's always well supplied and it's been working. So I, I have no initiative to, to take that over when, when I don't have to. And they do what they do well. Um, I don't think that I could recreate that, you know, in my closet. No, they're definitely award winners. They've won a bunch of cups, so... We, we know their work. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you find though, I'm curious with other parents, I mean, that to me, that's, that's an interesting potentiality that if you're somewhere where you don't have regular access and you do want to treat with cannabis and all of a sudden you find yourself having to learn how to grow, uh, to <laughs> care for your child. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that, you know, other parents have talked about like trying to learn to grow. And I think that that's actually like how TJ started, you know, somebody, um, was hurt and needed some cannabis, and so they just kind of started learning, you know. So there is that curve there. But I don't, I don't have the ebb of not doing it well enough and having his seizures return. Right, um, absolutely. But if I was, you know, maybe if I wasn't paired up with TJ's, it would be something I would consider. Uh, but I'm a really crappy gardener, so hmm. I can't imagine that going well for any under any circumstances. I did want to ask, how did you come about or hear about our show, if you don't mind me? From TJ's. From, from TJ, From Ryan. TJ's. Yeah, Ryan's uh, out of am I behind? Yeah, yeah, you're way behind, Ryan. Right. Right. Out of the <laughs> loop. I put the word out. I put the word I out. I heard about it uh, from TJ's, and, you know, I've been doing, learning about different people um, that are prominent in the cannabis community. I'm a big fan of Google. I'm, like, the internet queen. And so, little by little, I'm hearing different names and, and doing research. And, you know, he had told me about your guys' radio show, um, I guess. Uh, you guys are in Colorado. It's kind of a big deal over there. So I'm learning. Uh, nice. I have to be fed the information in order to know what to look for. You know, but when I have it, I get really excited and, you know, I do do some research. But, you know, I feel like I'm kind of a baby when it comes to all of this. Well, we've got Maybe some a toddler. Good... I might be up to toddler state now. We've got some good back uh, episodes for you to listen to. Also, you should go back and archive, go through our archives because we have a, a couple different episodes related to this matter and others and we you know we tend to we we try to educate ourselves during the show that's the key we, we try to bring in really people that teach us something you know every every week pretty much and or give nice. us great stories yeah i i will definitely do that i i had looked you guys up the other day and i was like oh look there's back issues you know so yeah. i'll make a point to to listen to a handful of those for sure well, right on. We're we're happy to add you to the to the listener pool. Yeah, it's always cool to hear from the people who, like, wouldn't have gotten involved in cannabis, you know, for any other reason necessarily. Because we're so spoiled in our circle of, you know, loving cannabis in general that you know we we hear about the amazing things it does sooner or faster than other people who aren't as exposed. So, but yeah, also, definitely. you were able to access it and. Well, but it's also like it's interesting, like as as a breeder, uh, like say about six, seven years ago in Amsterdam, I would uh, had a German friend who had MS, and he'd come through town, and every time he was there, I would try to give him as many samples of as many different strains that I had, and he'd go and give me like a report, you know, and he would mm -hmm. be able to tell me within a second which strains worked for him, and this is like, you know, we were like understanding CBD but not mm -hmm. really but testing it and saying oh this is this percentage of this. but he was like 
that strain, what, the way he explained it, which is interesting, he said he feels like his brain is literally got like like Swiss cheese holes in it or something, and that when he smokes cannabis, <laughs> that the holes get filled in, and now he can operate normally, you know. Mm-hmm. And but without it, he's right. things aren't connecting, you know. So, right. and, and he could tell with he could tell me within two two hits, you know what I mean? Take yeah. two hits, and he'd be like, "Yep, that does it right there," you know. So I was like, "Okay," and this one, no, this one, no, this one, yes. Te- you know, so he he was teaching me a lot, and that's I think interesting. That's where it's awesome to talk to real patients because then, with you know, like I'm sure your your son's probably taking somewhere between five and ten millig- milligrams if it's just a small dose, you know, yeah. just one drop. So it can't be much more or you know than that. Right. And that's a tiny, tiny dose. And for us, I mean, we're all just taking way too much cannabis and trying to wait. preventative measures. We're, we're, we're hoping that, yeah, we're hoping that it's all preventative medicine and it's all for good cause. Yeah, definitely. The <laughs> impenetrable wall. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so in, in, but in right. general, so for us, it's kind of hard sometimes to, to tell those tiny little nuances, you know, and that's when it's, it's awesome to see because actually that shows you the power of something when, when you can take a, a drop and, and effectively stop something in its tracks. That's pretty huge, but at the same, you know, and, and at the same yeah. time, he, you know, he could take the entire bottle and nothing would happen. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's it's there's. I mean, zero. he might get a little sleepy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and sleep it off. Yeah, you because know, like, I give him the one drop, and you know, he does get a little sleepy. Uh, you know, and. I'm, That's I'm so terrible for a mom to have sleepy. something to give her. Terrible yeah. for a mom to have to give her kid something that might make him a little sleepy sometimes. And, <laughs> right, <you're> <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, kid, a kid who especially she described as, as pretty especially uh, when they, wired. Especially when they give kids Ritalin and stuff, and you're like, so you're giving my kid for speed sure. and he's hyperactive. I get it. You know, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. Just <laughs> knock out yeah, all the syrup. Let's just blow everything out. You know what I mean? Just like get it done. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, it's been great because he's, you know, he's such a, he's such a blank slate. You know, there's no um, placebo effect. He didn't, you know, he, I was just giving him a new pill. So there was no, you know, right, he didn't really know. Yeah. Um, you know, he's never consumed cannabis in any form. So he had no tolerance. He had no expectations. There was no expectations from him. And so, you know, all I got was to see exactly, you know, how it was working. Um, you know, because he's... I mean, the placebo effect, like that was, you know, the first thing I thought, you know, for myself or maybe for other people, like maybe, maybe it works because you're thinking it's going to work. Well, he didn't know. So there was none of that. Um, it just worked. Does, does he at eight years old have a concept of, of what he's taking? Yeah. Does, does he, uh, have, he does, does he now. Know? He knows now. <laughs> we're, we're a very open family. We always have been, um, you know, talking about cannabis and, and all and alcohol and, you know, sex. We've always talked about everything. Um, and so when this came about, you know, I talked to the kids about it. Um, you know, they're pretty knowledgeable now, okay. uh, but it's no different than, you know, talking about his, med- his other medications, um, talking about things that are happening in life. This is just happening in our life. So can, um, I, can I throw you a question from the chat room then? And it's a little bit personal. You don't have sure. to answer. But um, so you've seen it help your child and you talk about, you know, wanting to be open about it and, um, and honest about, you know, what the benefits are. Would you consider using cannabis? Well, it's been a funny thing. I was actually, what, what I believe, and there's, there's no doctor's notes on this, but what I believe happened to cause Forrest epilepsy is we were in a car accident, me and the four kids, um, and Forrest hit his head. He hit it pretty hard. He actually had amnesia for a little while, about 24 hours, um, not full amnesia, but, you know, he didn't know who the Transformers were, and when you're five, that's a big deal. Whoa. Yeah, that um, was good. <laughs> Whoa. You know, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. So that had happened, and I was hurt. Um, I was hurt pretty bad. They thought I wasn't going to regain um, feeling in my legs. They, wasn't sh- they weren't sure if I was ever going to be able to walk again without a walker. Um, so, you know, I went through all my therapy, and they prescribed me Vicodin. And so here we are two years later, and for pain management, I use Vicodin. That's what my doctor gave me. So as I'm watching this, um, you know, it's maybe making me reconsider pain management for myself. Um, I'm not there yet. You know, my focus now is on forest, and um, it's going to be a process to go through. But, you know, I'm looking at myself. My mother, um, she has rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm like, hey, have you heard about this? It works for rheumatoid arthritis, too. And she has diabetes. I'm like, there are studies, I guess. It works for diabetes, too. You know, there's just this huge list. So anytime anybody has anything, 
Um, I'm like, have you heard? I guess it, it works for that too, you know. Like, so hey, I know a guy. Um, it's something I'm I know a guy. Doing. You're like, hey, I know a guy. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> I know a guy. Right? <laughs> my my mother has my mother has RA as well, and I uh, I actually got her some some like medicated salve to put on her hands, and she she loves it. Same thing with my dad; he gets some of the uh, the CBD medicated back patches, and he was putting wearing like fentanyl patches. He has such a bad back, and yeah, and he's my been, mother's on fentanyl also. Yep. And and he's For been sure. actually using because he's and and he's always been good with it. He does, never developed a problem or anything. He takes his 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 pills as he should for his pain. However, once I was able to get him some of those uh, like the transdermal patches, just like the fentanyl patches, he actually uses less of the fentanyl now. Only wow. when he has severe pain, he'll just slap on a slap on like a one to one or a CBD patch and and be feeling good. And that's and that's what it's about know. for me is is moderation because there's a reason that the opiates are used you know, in the severe emergency yeah. cases that they are, you know, um, they're, they're meant to be kind of temporary inflammatory responses, not, not, everyday not daily yeah. chronic yeah. management. And so that's where, you know, it just, to just use less of the opiates and, and the world could be a little bit healthier. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear though, that you would, you know, you just keep being open to it and, and getting that information for yourself and, and if you do want to check that information out, when you uh, go to check out our archives in our past, most recent episode, which we'll have up, and uh, the one prior to that, we'll have uh, quite a lot of info, actually, from our friend Jason Pinsky, who was 14 years managing pain with uh, hardcore opiates and transitioned off uh, in like wow. a tapered, controlled way using cannabis. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely sparked something in my brain, you know, a little bit different, um, you know, having gone through this with my son. And so, you know, the more stable he becomes and the more my, my motherly instincts can focus less on him, uh, you know, I, I, you know, just like I did with him, I just need to start, you know, you start researching and the information's out there and it's amazing. Uh, but if you don't know, you know, to look for it, uh, you never look for it. And so... How did that informational you know, journey take shape for you? I'm very curious about that, how you went down the rabbit hole. Obviously, you were skeptical at first, I have to imagine. Yeah. Um, so somebody had sent me the TED Talks on Colorado and the Stanley Brothers. So I, I watched that. My grandma actually sent it to me, right? Yeah. Uh, kind of crazy. And, and a lady from work, you know, she's like, I don't, I don't want to sound like, you know, really apprehensive trying to tell me about it. And, and so... Uh, from there, I watched that, sent that to, you know, a handful of people. Have you heard about this? Um, and I stayed up almost all night, uh, about three different nights, watching every episode, um, everything on YouTube, every other child story, um, everything I could find, watched it all. Um, you know, I would wake up, you know, at 10 o'clock, and everyone's like, why did you sleep in so late? I was up till 5 o'clock watching YouTube, um, just Googling everything I could find. Um, you know, because it's, it's not as, as commonly talked about. So I would spend hours and hours watching, um, watching YouTube, reading stories, um, you know, and just thought I had to seek out the information on my own, but luckily we have the internet and the internet's an amazing thing and it's all there. So how long so, did it you know, take would, you to be convinced just those th three nights of watching stuff and you were like, yep, I'm going to give this a shot. I really believe this. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, because that's, that's a lot of hours of information. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, once I had seen that it was working for um, for other kids, and, you know, I was in a desperate situation with my own son, I mean, what do I have to lose? Uh, it didn't It didn't really take a lot to convince me. Um, it probably takes more maybe for some other parents, but, you know, I was desperate. Yeah, well, now, you know, the thing is, like, when, when it's actual testimonial things, that's the thing about, you know, if you're watching YouTube and you're seeing real families and real stories, it's a lot easier to believe that or, you know, not even about believing it, but just sort of get inspired by that. Um, and then at the same exact time, you can go to the, like, the, the sad part is, is there's a lot of shysters out there. There's a lot of companies coming out with, you know, RSO that they've made or, C or CBD oil that they've made from Chinese hemp. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't have any effective qualities and they're selling it for $700 for, you know, a <laughs> treatment. And then the treatment is a couple of vials or a couple of syr syringes, and and it's not uh -huh. working, and then but people are buying them like crazy, so they don't care. You know, they sold a thousand boxes of these uh, really beautiful boxes that they spent a lot of money on, and put the mm -hmm. syringes of garbage in them, 
And, and uh-huh. so it's just getting that, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is help people that are. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to prevent that. <laughs> no, but that's what we're trying to do is help people that have had that situation maybe happen to them and get them direct to real medicine. You know, that's that's what we're right. That mm-hmm. is what we're really trying to do, like the opposite. And, and show them For that sure. the real medicine can be, more, you know, less expensive than that crazy yeah. overpackaged product. Yeah, and, and it doesn't. Well, have I know to be I was so sold good. on cannabis um, and the CBD, you know, pretty quickly. But you know, like I was saying earlier about them. Um, about TJ's being organic and some of those other things, um, then being local. Um, you know, I met a guy like a face, uh, you know, there's, there's a feeling behind that. Uh, so I was sold on the cannabis, but I was by no means going to order anything off the internet. Uh, you know, I had done enough research and, you know, smart enough to not trust buying too many things off the internet. Uh, so, you know, ironically I was paired up with them by, you know, a friend of the family. And so, um, you know, I was sold on it, but then finding where to get it, you know, I went to a dispensary. I'm like, do you guys have like CBD? And they're like, well, you know, we have this, we have this strain. How is your son, do you know how to process these flowers or whatever? And I was like, no, no, I don't know. Nope, that's too much. I'm, I'm out. I, I'm going to try something different. I don't know what to do with that. So, right. you know, uh, being, being organic, being, you know, close to home, um, you know, being a real person and a real face. Uh, all those things helped me feel more secure with, you know, giving him the medication, even though I was still scared, totally still scared. Um, but, you know, having those those little things in effect to help calm my nerves, sure. uh, it did help. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't order some hemp oil from China. I no. wouldn't. No, and that's a good, a good, that's good idea though. not to. And it's definitely- but I'm in a legal state, and a lot of parents aren't. And, you know, they're just as desperate. Mm-hmm. It, it's reassuring to so, us to to know that you were able to educate yourself within you know those three nights of research mm-hmm. to to understand that much. You know, our big fear is always that people will see the hope. You know, and, I heard, I heard that they're, they're doing that in Amsterdam at that one. There's one seed shop on the corner uh, on the Domstra that's got a big sign out that says hemp oil, and they're selling the prepackaged Chinese garbage for a lot of money. And people really? are there and like, oh, this is it, you know. And they, but they, it's classic uh, Dutch style where they just you know. Love it because people are buying it, taking it home. They never see them again because they get on the plane. You know what I mean? They spend two grand on a bunch of crap. So, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it happens yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's terrible. It is. It, I mean, it even happens here in Colorado where there would be CBD products sold in in the medical regulated market that had no CBD um, content. So it's it's coming around. I mean, and I guess that goes to say something for you know the means that we're getting our medication. The fact that they're not charging us for it. Yeah. Um. You know, when, when you're being charged, when you're being overcharged for something, uh, that should be a red flag. The fact that it is free, I mean, that goes to say, like, you know, that that there has to be something there beyond. They're obviously not there to make money off of me. Right. Why uh, would because they do they're offering it for free. You know, if they were trying to charge me, you know, $1,000, $2,000 or whatever, um, there's, there's reason to be concerned in that. You know, sure. like, that's shady. So... Yeah. No, and that's you know I did that, have some that, faith with just the fact that they were going to provide it to me at no cost. I mean, why would somebody give me you know sugar pills at no cost? I mean, what good does that do anybody? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very limited ill intent <laughs> available in, uh-huh. in a free free medicine. For sure. Well, we want to thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story and Forrest's story as well. And we hope you continue to be engaged with the show. Um, you know, definitely listen to the back episodes and contact us with any questions and anyone we can put you in touch with. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go listen to uh, some of the other ones on epilepsy and then, you know, maybe I'll spend a couple nights staying up all night you know, <laughs> listening on chronic pain because that sounds like that's my next uh I can already yeah, see. I can already see you watching all of our episodes research. one after another. Yeah, once you fall in love with the the characters, there's no turning back. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for letting me call in, guys. Uh, it was great talking to you, and have a happy, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, enjoy you your well. day. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, definitely. So there you go, guys. Cannabis and miracles, and yeah. family. That was awesome. Yeah, perfect for the CBD giveaway coming up. Just like yeah. perfect example. Just of why. to give, and that's the kind of those. Those are the people we're looking for, right there. Yeah. The, yeah. the classic mom who or, or dad who's a little bit reluctant, not sure about it, and they can meet. Yeah, the afraid actual, to talk about it, or yeah. you know. And then they can meet the actual go. people, see the little plants, realize that they're just these little plants, and it's the real. We're you know we're talking. 
voodoo witchcraft now. Yeah. We're talking yeah. herbs. Parents, parents got to see other man. parents. That's, that's, that's the key what thing. it is. Parents you know? really need to see and hear they from They don't want to be, feel shamed when they pick their kid up from school and see the other parents and feel like they can't relate, you know. Absolutely. Well, that was a miraculous Chris. That was our own little Christmas miracle getting that call. <laughs> Christmas miracle. But no, that's a crazy story. I mean, you hear it, but you never get them. It's great that it should, I mean, 100% uh, yeah. seizure free is awesome. Like, it's not just like, man, eh, kind of hit and miss, yeah, maybe working. Awesome. It's like, no, yeah. that's, and you can't say cured because cured is a huge word to huge throw word. around. Right. And, but you can say under control, 100% under, under control, which is pretty awesome. That's like, you know, quality of life, 100% better. Yeah. Uh, no matter how you look at it, because, you know, I don't, I, I mean, we, I don't have seizures every, uh, so I don't understand it how, but I can see it never, it always looks incredibly painful, but it's not to them. They don't remember because they get not come out of it, but you see the, the physical. It's got to be yeah. physically taxing. Oh, yeah. Well, they it, get, uh, you get really severe lactic acid buildup in your muscles, so right. you're sore like you like, like climbed a mountain yeah. exactly. for That's like a week afterwards, but you didn't do anything. Right. So you're just like anxious up. but tired and like just tensed the up. weird. Yeah, it's like you just see the, ten- you see the, you see the tension and you see the potential for injury and you see that, you know, if that happens to you in a situation mm-hmm. where you no, don't have the right people around you, they might, like I had a friend uh, in Amsterdam who was, you know, like large, pretty large black guy, who, American, who's young and just super nice dude. He was a he was a promoter, but he had asthma, you know, and he had, uh, and he was just like one of those guys who uh, was in Germany and he was at a party and he was in this big, huge, like mega, mega place, you know, and he had an asthma attack and he he didn't have his inhaler, and he went, to, you know, and he basically just died on the dance floor and everybody thought he was on drugs because he's, mm-hmm. oh, he's a big black guy, he's on drugs, don't touch him, you know? And it was like that crazy, like, oh, all he needed was that little, uh, you know, just give him that inhaler, which hopefully, you know, if he was on maybe a different situation, he wouldn't need the inhaler because mm-hmm. those things become the problem, you know what I mean? Like right, you get stuck simple. on that, you're stuck on the next thing. And so, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, just to see, that tiny, tiny amounts of medication, whatever that may be, are at the right moment. And cannabis seems to be even more effective than I would imagine. Like, because I, I used to think of it whenever I read all the Indian hemp sort of things, it'd be like anti spasmodic, anti inflammatory. And it was like kind of like half believing it and half going, like, really? Can it really do all this stuff? And I remember thinking, because this is, you know, when I was young and there wasn't really no medical proof beyond. That stuff, right? The old, old stuff right. from and, like the 1800s. And I was like, descriptive well, science. And I was like, well, wait a minute, this can't be so good. You know what I mean? How could it not? And then the weirdest thing to me was that Chinese medicine sort of like dropped it. You know what I mean? Which is strange because you would kind of think that Chinese would just continue with that stuff, but right? They kind of like dropped it in their own weird way. I think due to us, you know, more Co- than anything. Communism and, you know, yeah, that <laughs> trade more political. as an issue mostly. C- combination of all those things. Yeah. But, yeah, you see, so if you look at, like, the effectiveness of cannabis as medicine, we, we I get shocked every time I hear something like that when I hear how little it takes to get somebody, com- their whole, you know, uh, system to be balanced out from just I, that little time. I around. always think of it, though, like, so when you say something like Chinese medicine or Eastern medicine, like as a category of like how that is applied compared to what Western medicine is, Western medicine is reaction based. It's you have a problem and now we're going to treat it. Whereas Eastern medicine is preventative health. And so for me, it's like cannabis is about making you healthy. It's not curing anything. It's about making your body stronger and healthier so that you are yeah. just a more resilient person. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly so, you yeah. know, when, with Americans who don't, generally have good nutrition they don't have access to good nutrition if they yep. try you know because we have such poor access to like fresh regular food raw food well it's like general. it's like it's like um, if uh, you look at just the different uh, ha- the the appetite s- suppression of certain drugs people don't eat mm-hmm. they stay up for three days they lose their mind because of that they're hallucinating because they've been up right. for three days and it's, it's it's not always the drug itself it's a lot of times the conditions that the drug sort of puts you in sure. and if you don't eat 
for that many days and you do and then you don't sleep properly and then you mm. do you know it, 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 put, it spins you out right. and uh i can tell you one thing with cannabis it makes you definitely pretty regular as long as you're like <laughs> smoking at the right same time every night mm-hmm. you will wake up on the couch at that exact same spot going like huh what happened <laughs> oh man went down again you know what i mean like and and that pretty much can conditions you to sort of you know like you're, it doesn't make you stay up for days it makes you hungry when you actually wake up you're like oh i'm hungry now so then i'm you not start, hungry unless i smoke if i don't like if i'm on vacation yeah i'm at my parents house not, I don't you don't eat with much me. right i won't eat for a day right. or two I until find my body that, gets and used so to strange, it but I, what you're talking about is is usually the worst because you like you like you said you fall asleep on the couch you wake up it's 2 30 in the morning <laughs> but you still like on your way to your bed you happen to just veer left and yeah. grab some shit out of your cabinets oh, yeah. stuff your face with a piece of pizza that was sitting out when you fell asleep. And so I don't have random there. pizza just hanging around. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do. No, but I'm saying like if you order a pizza that night and then you yeah, eat yeah. some of it, fall asleep, wake yeah. back up before yeah. you it's put the pizza away, you eat a piece and then yeah. you put the pizza away. Oh, yeah. All right, I want to bring it back yeah. to earlier in the show. I found the Santa Claus and mushrooms oh, yeah, let's, thing let's on our Christmas on episode That's here. That's a good one. Let's go on. Okay, so this is a synopsis from Joe Rogan's website. Oh, my God. Our, we're not hitting on Joe Rogan right now. I love Joe Rogan. No, I yeah, love Joe Rogan, saying. but uh, of course you got this from his website. Because it's the only one okay, that's but, short enough but, to read right but now. But did you, did you see the Jack Herrera connection? That I was talking yes, about. this is. For, he was reading Jack's thing about this, and I found okay, Jack's thing. It's very oh, long. Okay, then we're it's okay. open right see, here. Jack told me by person. Yeah, so there you go. Oh, you see, he he told him. Yeah. He told him personally. Okay. This is about. There's no reading this shit. This he about, told him this is personally. About yeah, but he couldn't remember it perfectly. Or 96, <laughs> total evidence. I couldn't remember it. <laughs> so you didn't mention the number one thing is Amanita muscaria. Yeah, is red and both white. Red and white, yeah. and that's what Santa Claus is, right? Exactly. What the and fuck? What do you mean? What do you mean? Amanita muscaria is the big, ri- the classic mushroom. Red and white. Mario. The Mario mushroom. See, yeah. Mario, and you see him in all the movies, and it's always the and, and that and that's the one they found in the Queen's. Uh, in well, the that's Queen's the one yard. that they eat in. In you heard about that? Yes, yeah, so it just like a week ago or two. But that has nothing to do with Santa. Claus. They were like. But headlines were, the queen is growing magic mushrooms. Yeah, that's right. It was like, really? The queen? And then all of a sudden it was like, they found one Amanita, Amanita yeah. in, in the yard. That's not quite. That really eat hurt. It. Yeah, eat it. Eat it. Eat it. So, yeah, so. So anyway, that. And same that's, color as Santa. Same color as Santa. And then like a Santa hat. has the flying reindeer. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the shamans would drink the reindeer piss yes. after the reindeers ate the Amanita in Siberia, right. which is where Santa is freaking from, North exactly. Pole. Exactly. Pine trees, as you said, is what Amanita muscaria they grows grow under. Around, they grow around in circles. Uh, those and other mushrooms grow in circles around them. And that the shiny red and white caps... Blooming under the tree look very much like the traditional placing of wrapped boxes, right? Exactly. It's like I'm saying. You put them around the tree. <laughs> it's got all this really weird. And the best part is, is uh, you know, like the, the kids were not involved with that Christmas tradition at all. They stayed home and probably just got to play and be, were like, where is everybody at? I don't know. Let's yeah, play. Like parents Woo, are, parents yeah. are gone. So they probably got to do their little So here's funny, some other. Like, here's thing, some other. Right? Same idea. And then they came home wasted. Ah, reindeers and flying stuff. When and, people, know, <laughs> the stories when people would pick the mushrooms, they would place them on the boughs of the tree to dry them. <laughs> oh, ooh, A lot go. like how we now hang ornaments. 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 There yes. you go. Like, like that. People place red and white socks over the fireplace. Why, do we, why red and white socks? It's the color of the mushroom. Why do they hang it? Because that's another way to dry mushrooms for storage. Mm. Um, Got, like, you flip and, I mean, notify and notice that Santa there. doesn't come in the front door. He comes down the chimney where you're maybe drying your mushrooms. I think this oh, is yeah, all. Kind of I think this is all ridiculous. To be completely honest with you, it's but not. It's, it, it all it's ties not. in. Is it, it is. less ridiculous it is. than the than the Santa Claus it's North Pole drinking reindeer piss? How's yeah. that for ridiculous? Well, how about this? How about this? <laughs> no, it's so, not. So it Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Santa Claus comes down your chimney with a fat bag of gifts, right? I don't think it has yeah. So hold on. Mushrooms. I so really don't. in those areas, mm-hmm. when the shamanic rituals, such as eating the mushrooms, were banned, the shamans would climb into each other's houses through the roofs, through the chimneys, with their bags of mushrooms for the ritual. So who ha- who really goes down a chimney? I, like I feel like no one's gonna <laughs> climb down a chimney. Maybe they just that was like their move. Like they couldn't do a like a handshake thing. It wasn't just cool like that. Well, maybe so they, they just tossed the, it. They just tossed it down the chimney. Maybe they kept it walking down, with yeah. their stick. 
Yeah. I just maybe, don't maybe that. That. That's a switch up. Maybe that's a, like, that. Yeah, that's the handoff. Hand I can yeah. see that. This is the mushroom handoff. Yeah, so you really think that the history and story of Santa Claus sparked via mushrooms? No, Jack Harrow really thinks. Jack Harrow thinks it, but he's got a, good, a lot of back. He's good at He's also the guy who stuff. figured out he cracked the hemp code. He cracked the whole hemp code. What do you mean the hemp code? The whole idea. Do you know who Jack Harrow is? Yeah, I know who Jack is. Who what, who's it? Jack Harrow, Ryan? Wasn't Jack even under the strain when he started? He didn't did not start, start the strain. strain. He didn't make, I mean, it's named after, after him. It's no, he did not. Yeah. Yes. That was, a, that was an so honorary title. So how about, title. How about like, tell so us who in, Jack Harrow is. Enlighten me then. Enlighten no, 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 please. No, no, no please, he, you enlighten us. so well known for? Now I just, what is now the I'm emperor wears no clothes? Have you heard of that? The emperor wears no clothes? Yeah, do you know what that is? No. Well, you need to read it. You need to. It's a book. It's a book. You need to read it. And you need to read it. Do you have the book? Yes. Are you going to give it to me? Yes. Then I'll read it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not supporting those commies. Hey, the guy's dead. You might want to support him. Support his family. His family needs your help. Did you say he came out after his death too? That's like no, no. that's the mushroom. Sad. No, no, the book, the mushroom was the last thing he was working on. He was working on that for when I talked to him about it, it was like a ninety four or something like that. Ninety, yeah, ninety, 90 even earlier, ninety two. So, and he was talking about it then. And, and you then think Santa Claus just started because of mushrooms? Dude, well, clearly did a lot of the tradition, drugs. The tradition of Ryan. Where do you think Santa Claus came from? I don't believe in Santa Claus because I'm not five. No, but well, obviously not, that you when no, did you stop story, believing in Santa Claus? Like last year or something? I just think that that's two years ago. Right? Yeah. How I many years? Believing in Santa Claus. His when family's I was 22 been years old. Yeah, that's that totally would make it. sense. But no, I I just I, I feel like that that definitely isn't where the original story of Santa Claus. Where did the Claus original story from? come from? Didn't they say that the original story of the Saint Nicholas bullshit started over in Europe? The same way that it did in France, and the, with the, with the shoes and the chocolate, and that was the Saint Nicholas thing. So then, so where'd that come from? What, where I have no idea. I'm not a fucking historian. Well, but Jack Error, I think fucking what, was and a, and a linguist. So I just find it hard to believe Ryan's that an not entire in the habit of collecting information. Okay, and it's, I'm not. <laughs> but an entire an entire. <laughs> An entire story of Christmas, I just find it hard to believe that it spawned off of a mushroom. But trip. no, 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 not the story of Christmas, because the story no, of Christmas has whole, nothing to do with Santa. the story of Santa Claus, not the story of but that's the, that's Santa exactly Claus the Christmas. point. That's exactly the point. Did not Every, come from a mushroom trip. It was not where, but where did it show up from? It has the nothing same to do with way, Christmas. All, all the same way the Easter Bunny showed up and the Tooth yeah. Fairy showed up. Not yeah. fucking mushroom trips. What did Jack have to say about I, Easter, Adam? Yeah, what did you have to say about Easter? We didn't really talk about Easter, but that's a, that's a stupid one, too. Yeah. Well, well, well I've, got, I've got the official the Easter Bunny, St. Nicholas, got us. discovering the truth about Santa Claus website. So What's I the will, truth about Santa? I will. Clearly, that is the first thing that this website is going to tell us. <laughs> and everybody's giving me a hard time, and nobody else knows the story. You all got to fucking Google it, too. Uh, no, well, I'm just not. Well, I'm no, just not we just told you the story. It comes from mushrooms. So I'm going to give you the one that's for kids because we'll start. That hurt, that's right, perfect for we'll him. Start, we'll start from the, the bottom. The kids here. 710 on the Instagram, kid. everyone. The kids' version of what's going down. Who is Saint Nicholas? All right. Right, we got it. It's it's going to it might be animated for fun though. Oh. The true story begins with uh, Nicholas who's born in the 3rd century. This thing the says the 4th century, but yours might be right. Yeah. Uh, it was a Greek area at the time, but now it is considered the southern coast of Turkey. It's the nice spot. And so, he, did you know Ankara. he was the he was the area. Antalya, Ankara, yeah. for that. He was the patron saint of judges, pawnbrokers, pawnbrokers, criminals, merchants, sailors, bakers, travelers, the poor, the and children. The saint of criminals. Yeah, this guy's the man. Yeah, so he, he pretty much did, the Greek. dedicated his life just taking care. I love this guy. Taking care of people and, and like the beard. like kind of the grimy people though. Sounds like me. Well, then where did Santa Claus come from? Santa Claus. Uh, one story oh. tells of a poor man with three daughters. What about Young Saint woman's Nicholas? father had to offer prospective husbands a dowry. Saint Nicholas hooked him up. Uh, Nailed it. Yeah, he put <laughs> he put bags of gold through an open window that landed in their shoes. Apparently, the guy's got and good that aim. was the dowry that got those daughters married off, and so that was very saintly of him as well. So I got this one for you, Ryan. Most religious, yeah. I don't think most, but many religious historians agree that Saint Nicholas did not actually exist as a real person, and was instead a Christianized version of earlier pagan gods. Nicholas's legend were mainly created out of stories about the Teutonic god called Holdnikar, really Odin, I guess, 
and but that was the Greek the Poseidon to you Greeks. Another Greek, yeah. You know, uh, powerful sea god was known to gallop through the sky. Dirt. So, in to bring it back to Sisi, right in Scandinavia, the mm-hmm. Teutons believed that Odin, on his eight-legged horse, like how Santa has the eight reindeer, yeah. would gallop through the sky, leading the armies of the dead. Well, he had to lead the souls from the world to world. That's his deal, because Christmas is on That's the shortest day of the that year. That was a steez. That's. Yeah. Christmas is the shortest day of the year. That's the point. So it's the darkest day of the year, especially up in Scandinavia when you're near the North Pole. So they were like, wow, it's a really dark day. That's the day that the dead are all rolling. Chilling. Dark so you then Bumble would gather with your family around a big fire and be all together. And you would put Boots outside with uh, hay for his eight-legged horse, Sleipnir. His name means sleep. And that is where I thought Christmas came from. And that's Because you're Jewish. Yeah, I know. So, so, that, so I can look at these count. things. You saw gold. You heard gold <laughs> coins, and you got all excited. No, right? no. Dude, <laughs> hold on. Let's tell the whole world this. Okay. So I, I received a package from my mom, and she's been sending me gifts for the past couple of days. And ever since we were a kid, I've been getting those the You're the gold wrapped the chocolate. They're called Hanukkah gelt. You're still the kid. Hanukkah by the way. gelt. The gold wrapped chocolate coins, even though they have nothing to do with Christmas. And you ate them without. Them. Just eat them with. I the... opened a box at the office today. Yeah. And before I, I can even down, before but... I can even open the box, his hand was in there grabbing those Jewish coins, taking them out, and they were gone. <laughs> Our wrapper's gone. <laughs> five seconds. You have to give the Jew the Jew coins. That's the rule. I can't even open the box. He saw the coins and boom. Don't you Jew know the tra- he, don't you know the tradition? <laughs> he knew that those coins were in there before he could. Smell smell it. Your treasure, right? smell That's it. that is it's like the center class of of oh. those coins. That's what they're for. The Jew in the room funny. has to grab them. They didn't teach you guys that. I left those cookies no. there though. Really so so the that. last note from the children's page that says tip for parents. Oh, angry. Uh, tip for parents hey. says uh, that the real reason behind Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus, slash blah blah blah, lots of other names, is that. Uh, it draws uh, attention towards the gift giving for the end of year celebrations so that on Christmas Day, it could be preserved for celebration of Christ. So they had Santa Claus to do the gift giving because Christ was about Christ. Christ. was too busy to do the gift giving. He wanted to be so, about himself. So the Advent <laughs> uh, has the you know four weeks of preparation before Christmas. Uh, and so St. Nicholas, that's why it was like the 5th of December now is largely celebrated. It used to be, I guess, the 15th of November or something. Wow. Um, so they uh, they dreamed that up so that everyone would get that out of their system and then focus on, on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. And then we just crammed that's it all together over here in America. That's my. That's what I try to that's do. That's what I do on Christmas. As long as I'm fo- I focus on Jesus. Yeah. That's my thing. You're, you're supposed to. <laughs> that's the funny part about almost all these holidays is there is like, like there's the, the little religious baby version. Jesus. They start about Jesus and think of Jesus like a little baby. Yeah. They, they, they start off with their uh, like you know there is the thing about Easter which I do appreciate is the fact that it's the last holiday that is based on like astrology in a sense. It's actually like whatever. Well, for you guys, yes. Well, not for the yeah. Jewish holidays. You guys kill everybody off. The you just killed everybody off. Sacrifice them to the moon. Yes. Kill them you off. Kill Sacrifice Jesus. them to yeah, the moon you, god. You, you can't kill just Jesus. kill everybody off and think you're going to take can't your just gold. put people on crucifixes and think that you can take over the world. The but, Romans crucifix. But, but it's based on like two weeks after the last full moon of the world. Boom. Not Bruce Banner in the chat room just posted the link. Cannabis Culture Online, The Psychedelic Secrets of Santa Claus, 2003 article. Nice. See how old it is? How old were you back in 2003? Damn, I graduated. Like I was in seventh grade. Oh, right. So, man. so when you were in seventh grade, Jack Herrera figured figure this that stuff out. out. Yeah. Jack Herrera was doing way too many drugs because I mean, maybe I was he just in the model UN, and he was. He was. That's what I mean. He, I was in when he, he, about to, when he like told me the story. He was tripping. Pictures. So that's true. He was tripping balls when he told me the story. So it was kind like, of funny. See, right? That's what I mean. He's dude. like, you want some? And I was like, no, nah, it's cool. And I had to like walk him from like maybe like five blocks from Homegrown Fantasy or from the Hash Museum to Homegrown Fantasy. So it's not that far. Across the damn square. Around the corner, right? It took us like forty-five minutes because he was just like rah, rah, telling me this whole story about mushrooms and Santa Claus, and I was like l- listening and totally riveted by it. But at the same time, was watching him and was thinking, you know, I thought this guy was going to be a little bit more on point, and he was just like, <laughs> like just popping mushrooms and eating and doing acid, and I was like, okay. And then got him to do. When I got him to Homegrown Fantasy, he had to do a little speech there, and he was. Right. He was fully tripping at that point, so it was really funny because the story got worse than me on a tangent. Like even to the point where I was going, like, "Dude, you've lost it now. You need to go back <laughs> to the go back, go back, what? Jack." And he was looking at me like I was his little connection to reality, you know. So he was like, "Oh, 
Should I, I gotta go. God, it's like <laughs> I had to go backwards. But he. But the funny part was that I saw him do the same speech, like at another time, and then I realized he wasn't off track at all. He always goes to that same thing. It's like, oh, he's oh, he was right on point because his whole deal is he loves to explain how he was totally not into weed and had nothing to do with it until one day when he smoked some weed and made love to some chick and like it was like do 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 the music started you know <laughs> and, who's, yeah who's that girl Why and I'm like she and I'm like going like. Uh, I don't really know if I want to visualize any of this stuff. This isn't really, this is like, woo. But then he does, he loved that story. That was like one of his key stories. Like, oh, yeah, and then I made love. You know, it's like, oh. And you thought he was just saying that because he was tripping. Exactly. So really I would thought, it. oh, no, no one wants to hear this. But, but no, he's making him hear it. That's how, that's how he does. That's how he does. <laughs> no, Jack was an awesome, awesome speaker. Obviously, that's what his whole deal was. But if you read the book. Ryan, the kid the playing kid. with your phone. I don't know if they make it for iPhone. I don't know if it's on an iPhone yet. Said, I'm not reading it. No, no, literally, you can get oh. uh, an audio You need one. to read It'll it. It'll read it to you. You can bring me the book, and I will uh, read it. If it can read it to you in his voice, it'd be awesome, and it'd be all spitting on you and shit, all that. Can we do an audio book <laughs> version of it? Do you think we can get a license, <laughs> Adam? Huh? Do you think we can let's, get a license for make us to do an audio book version for the audio of the book. Show? We can do the radio voice that I came up with at the shop at the, at the studio the other day. We can just do the whole voice with that. It yeah, doesn't work here because it had an effect on it, but it was great. Speaking of which, maybe now since we're wrapping up the episode, it's time to tell people next week's show, New Year's Eve, which will be a little more organized than this week's show. We're going to have fireworks. No, it's my, we'll it's be my our, birthday show. Uh, is it really your change. birthday? Uh, my birthday is the 30th, but it's a pointless day to have a birthday, so I just call it. Super New pointless. Day to have a there you go. Uh, so you have to bring Murphy. Santa if Claus you have Jesus, cake, so you have really to bring can't. cake for everyone. I hope you know that. <laughs> I have to bring the cake on my birthday too. Oh, Dutch birthday, Adam. Dutch, Dutch birthday. Dutch birthday. Dutch birthday yeah. Do you know about <laughs> Dutch birthdays? No, I do not. Adam, you gotta buy every. You gotta buy everybody drinks on your birthday. It's like <laughs> that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> like like when you win at golf. That's why I would never play golf. Yeah. If you win at golf, you have to. Pay I don't for know. If you win a thing at golf, there's something. Dutch about don't it. really celebrate something their about birthdays golf. very much. I don't play golf. Gotcha. Andrew to, plays golf. Andrew plays a lot of golf. I have to pay to win. Oh yeah. There's, Angry just handed me a sick piece of lemon G that I'm definitely ripping a calyx off of right quick. Uh, we're ra- running out of yeah, show here. I gotta say, quickly. I had some quick, uh, quick. some lemon strains from Dark Horse. Very very nice. Nice. Very happy with those strains. My goodness. Good good, good. business. Oh good, man, good we didn't shout out any sponsors there. all good show. Yeah, I was gonna Way segue. To I was hoping around, you were Murphy gonna pick Mike. it up, but I. Thanks for thanks know. for making us uh, see that. See the oh, light there. guys, oh. sorry, I'm dark off first. track. Let's start well, no, first. you know what? I don't want to do a shout out. I don't want to do a brief shout out. I want to spend. We got, we got five minutes. So. Yeah, we got five because we showed up late. I want to spend like a proper yeah. Like I'm grateful this holiday season. We're coming to the end of it, and this is the the whole thing. We're we're transitioning from iCannabis Radio, and we will be broadcasting from AdamDunshow.tv. We'll be live on there, and that's courtesy of Dark Horse, who set that up for us. They also set us up with our new Vimeo account. Our friends, yeah, Mm -hmm. our good friends. friends. No, because we're on Vimeo. I can say sponsored. Whoa, man! Yes, it's revolutionary. We're on YouTube. YouTube ain't getting it anymore. Oh, fuck YouTube! People who like us enough to hook us up with the better ways. To make so we'll like still be us. on YouTube, so don't really fuck them that bad. Well, we will be we'll be chopped up. We'll be on, <laughs> there. Will be suck. segments we available. There's, the under, there's an underground YouTube account. Did there, you guys read that? <laughs> yeah, the underground YouTube account. That's that's yours, Chris's. The underground YouTube account will not have access anymore. But <laughs> ooh, locked out. But Man. it will be chopped up. It'll be available. Oh, what uh, what on is he gonna stuff. do at night? He's, he Somebody call anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Spread the word. Yeah, spread the word. Get, get Adam Dunn show out there. Uh, so the Vimeo account will be available. We'll be a live and direct on adamdunshow.tv. Yeah. Thanks to Dark Horse. And also thanks to our other sponsors who have helped us set up the awesome studio we'll be broadcasting from. So number one, that's Way to Grow, the best resource you can possibly find for the widest range of grow supplies. If you're thinking of like if you want a whole depot, supplies, concentration supplies, concentrate. Sure, sure, sure. That's so if you want to go to concentrate corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, con- at the only at the Platte River location on that one though. Yeah, at newest shop at Silverthorne. So seven locations. And way to uh, grow net online. They got great info on there. Their sales still on this month. A lot of in store stuff. They have people in there doing demos and stuff. You and we're gonna have them on the show in the coming year yep. in the new season, presenting live and direct. What's awesome in in the grow technology world what's new products on the shelf and hooking people up directly with some products nice um 
Also, shout out to Build the Soil who brought us our last week's episode, uh, our constant connect on the organics. If you haven't checked them out yet, buildthesoil.com. They are the best resource that I've ever seen. Good show last organic week, too, cannabis so growing really info. Yep. And they have great links to every every episode. And they'll give you so support. much attention. If you have questions and you email them, you'll get like a person will talk to you and care Jeremy, about your the problems. Owner. Well, you yeah, know, the, the person. Like, well, the name the name speaks for itself too, because the reality is it's like you don't just go in buy it off the shelf. You talk to him, tell him what you're doing. He looks at your conditions. You might have your own formula that you love and he might be able to help you adjust that one or maybe just you know fulfill it maybe you got the perfect formula already you don't need his help dare you say help you build the build soil? your soil yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> i dare you also say. we definitely got a shout out as we said dark horse genetics again in general they're still giving away a pack a week mm-hmm. so what you got to do is go to darkhorsegenetics.com go to their website log into their forums and in there, there's a topic, free pack, Adam Dunn Show giveaway thingy. Mm-hmm. Sign up. Yeah. Post in there. That's how That's how you get win the pack. While we're speaking of winning packs of seeds, Greenpoint Seeds, our other new sponsor. Um, Greenpoint, you can check them out, greenpointseeds.com. And now that I have internet in front of me, I can pull them up. They have the Star Dog Mail and the Cookie Monster Mail doing some really great work out of Colorado. Uh, you can check out Goo Grows on Instagram. I'm pretty sure that is his account. Uh, my battery's running low, but I'm going to pull up Greenpoint Seeds. Oh, classy website, see? Classy website. So their forum you can sign up for, but you also want to sign up for their newsletter. Uh, that's the main thing. If you sign up for their newsletter at greenpointseeds.com, that's your chance to win a pack of seeds. It says subscribe right under the big pack of seeds on greenpointseeds.com. The red subscribe button Bam. will get you linked in to win some seeds. Courtesy of uh, Greenpoint. Also got a shout out Incredibles Edibles. That's right. Colorado's number one edibles candy bar. He doesn't know any of them, so don't worry. No, he doesn't know. It's never even happened. I did see see that Incredibles Edibles is rocking a 2015 limited edition New Year's Year's bar. 100 milligrams. That's good for New Year's Eve. 100 milligrams and how much they should actually put how many milligrams of Pot Rocks are going to be. Or, uh, you know, because that would... I'd be down to know. It's white chocolate with popping and popping bits. Popping bits. Can't say pop rocks. Can right. It's infused with 100 milligrams popping THC. Bits. It was the THC magazine best edible in 2013. Oh, no. Sorry. The monkey bar was the best edible. Oh, These are all the things they've won. They've won so many awards. I'm being overwhelmed here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On their tour bars. But yeah. Incrediblescolorado.com or text Incredibles, I N C R E D I B L E S to 20300. And they'll link you up. They have awesome deals and. Yeah, great, great. The best products. Check in them out on MSNBC on uh, Sunday nights, ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Pop there you Barons. Go. Pop Barons. So Pop Barons. Maybe you'll see a familiar Adam Dunn show face or two. Nice. Mainly this guy. This guy. Mainly on Sunday. This Sunday. You can watch me on Sunday on Pop Barons. Please, man, just watch me, man. Also, got a shout out. Uh, are you are you still? Are we doing shout outs? Of still? course, we don't, we yeah. Love at the end, we got to keep going. We got to give everyone the love. Are you guys still listening out there? Are you ready for more shout outs? <laughs> people you can connect with, and we definitely appreciate you supporting these guys because they're supporting us and they're making they're helping us grow the show and reach our new platform. What about uh, what about to uh, or we're, we don't have any with us today, but to our schmo connection out there? Oh, we, we're going to do the giveaway sponsors after we wrap up. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And everybody who helped provide us with those uh, the, the CBD. Yeah, we're, that we're sure. That's away. that's Big thanks. coming coming up. Though. And uh, I think a bunch of you guys listening have hit us up uh, during the show here to say that you'll want to give us some or participate in the CBD event. If you've been liking it on Facebook, if you've been anything it, definitely anything contact it. us so we know how it. many people are coming because we want to provide for anyone. And that'll be Adam at adamdunshow.com. I'm giving out Adam's email address, and he's just nodding his head, taking a dab. So hopefully he'll answer your emails. Oh yeah, you know me, and you know me, and answering things like quickly and on time. So it'll it'll be CC or you or somebody. I'm not gonna look at it. I'll pretend it's gonna be your email. That's gonna be tomorrow. CC probably will handle. She's a business handler. She's handling. That is that is. She'll forward it to me. That's for sure. Well, that's 100. percent She'll CC you. She'll (laughs) CC me. (laughs) She does have a CC on every email I think she's ever sent. So it's true. She's keeping good records. That was her. That was her thing. 
she takes your name I would seriously. Take she takes your name seriously, you know. If you're like, well, my name is Cece. I'm allowed to do that too, every single time. So let's shout out our product sponsors. First of all, Nectar for the Gods, who's also sponsoring our big CBD giveaway. Nice. Um, we're definitely excited to be able to offer full nectar lines. People will be able to grow their medicine um, organically, as our caller today kind of expressed was really. And I'm important. using the I'm using their their. Uh, Soil, Soil? Right now, the number four right now. How's yeah. that working out? Awesome, awesome. Very yeah. happy with it. It's very, it's very uh, gritty, it's powdery almost, right? Gritty, or, yeah. It's different, different vibe. It's not as fibery as some of the other crap that you get out there. Because it doesn't have the sphagnum peat moss, spaggy, no which spaggy. is not a renewable resource. Yeah. So it's, uh, but it's peat. It's does it have peat? No, it doesn't. Does no, peat. Have no, peat. no, it has no peat. It's all uh, like kind of sandyish. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, coir like that, and then, mineral. Yeah. yeah. Mineral. I've lived it's, it's, it's in mineral. It's minerally. Like, just yeah. like what you say a second ago. <coughs> anything anything <laughs> It's minerally Lee and anything um, yeah. So thank so definitely you big, big shout out to Nectar for the Gods. And, and we're going to be bringing Scott on more in the next year to answer your guys' questions and get connect more of you with the free packs of Nectar. The free giveaways will flow better in the next year. In the meantime, holler at us on Instagram. I know a bunch of you have been emailing me and Facebook messaging me. I do not have the power to ship these things out because I don't have them. So hit us on Instagram and the kid. We'll get a hold of them. We'll get new ones. I talked to Adam CB Scientific. We'll, we'll get new up. ones. We'll, we'll double, double up. up. We'll take care of everybody's winning needs. I did them. I filled them out. I also, missed. shout out the guys at SmoDankStop.com. Is it the Dankstop or Dankstop? I think it's Dankstop, not the. Just Dank, Dankstop, Dank, Dankstop, Dankstation. Dank, I think you'll yep. get there. Dankstation. Thanks, Station. No. Oh, man. Now you just Hold on. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. Dank. I'm going in. Oh, the Dank Stop are our other friends. But we're talking about Dank Station. Dank Station? You can go to both. Yeah. Go to both. Support, go to both. Support, go to both. support all our friends. Someone but else. Dank Station is going to be the ones who have our uh, show. The SMO. Yeah, that's the vape, only vape pen we're really rocking. 100 bucks. It's in my car right now, so... Not that I would ever do it while driving, because you know. That's yeah, because that's. You, know, you that's were just, just carrying it. Mine fell out of my pocket in my car too. No, it is Dank Stop, buddy. It's not the Dank Station, that's for sure. Oh, whatever. Oh yeah. Well, who knows? No, Dank Stop's still the other guys. So that's that's our other boys. From Are you Jersey. sure? That's your Jersey guys. Hey, Jersey. Hey, guys. that's hey, the Jersey. Jersey guys. That's the Jersey guys. Hey, these aren't the <laughs> Dank Station guys. Huh? What, the, what are the What are the smoke guys? They were Dank Station, I thought. They all, their website is down. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is not where you get We're the smoke. Experiencing some technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, well, I've been giving out a bad website for a while now. Wow. Bad job. Bad so job. So Google it. Let us know. Yeah, I'm going to look that up while uh, you guys want to do shout outs. Someone hop in. Quick yeah. shout outs. Uh, well, so shout out to all of I've spent every single. How about Christmas. to all the? How about to all your stalkers that are on, on our show? All to all the stalkers <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Thanks for missing me. Yeah. If, if you're not here, they're all. Where's Murphy? Where's Murphy? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's talking but, too uh, much. No one wants to look at Ryan. This is gonna be the first <laughs> Christmas I've ever spent not in uh, in my dispensary up in Vail taking care of my patients. So oh, shout out to man. everyone that I won't see tomorrow. I'll miss all of you. <laughs> Uh, but I will be doing. I will be celebrating Christmas on my own for the first time in five years too. So that's, that's a, interesting. A, a first time not working in a very long time. Pretty cool. Shout out for that. Well, I get shout outs today. You can get a it's shout. It's a new really? year, buddy. Well, yeah. you get. Yeah, it's the holidays. We well, have New Year's yeah. resolution yeah. Say, for yeah. Well, definitely. Books. I mean, uh, you know, shout outs to you know the family and friends. I know my my mom I know and dad a book to get you for. Uh, yeah, Christmas. right. Get me the book for hey. Christmas. Everyone should. Everyone should buys books because he loves books. Look Absolutely. at him. That guy's, that's a book lover. I'm a right book there. lover. That I'll read the shit out of books. That's all that guy does. Is no, I don't. He dreams about books. I think I might have read like eighteen books in my life. Nick has read way more books than you. Nick is way smarter than <laughs> he reads five he knows, books a he night. He knows things I don't know. He knows Swedish. He, yeah, he reads five books a night, yeah. at least, minimum. I mean, one fish, two fish doesn't necessarily count flish. as fun. No, fish ain't going to work. When's the last time? Right. I can't read. read. <laughs> you, <laughs> I, one one fish, fish, That's where he flesh. stopped. Yeah. Dr. Oh, Seuss yeah. just was the barricade <laughs> where he was like, I, I, have I give up. I collection. I think that's a sub I give up around the One fish started rhyming, and I couldn't do it. It's rhyming, crushed But no, shout outs to the family and friends. Love all you guys. Guys and uh, you know everybody uh, over over at over at Dixie Elixis oh, <laughs> Listen, listening up. Jan, I know Jan's down there. He's on his way over to over to Europe right now. So. He's over to Europe. So he's going over to Europe right now. So big shout out to, to JC, the big guy, and head honcho. <laughs> 
about it. <laughs> this is why you don't get shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> That's your one shout out a year. I'm like, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Who? Who am I going to shout out to? My uh, dog's pretty cool. Your bong. Where is your dog? Is your dog running around the law office? I think he's in your, your bong. Yeah, you got a new dog. Good job. I got a new dog. Duke. Yeah, yeah shout out to Duke. He's the man. Duke. Dog, dogs are good. Whoever named him, though, was an asshole. It's so you can rename him generic. when you get your dog. No, he's one. He knows his name. You can it's, do it. Yeah, but Ook, that's just name him move. Luke or Book or Snook, and he'll, he'll be fine. He's all those. Yeah. So. Okay. 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 He'll be fine. Anything with the Ook at the end. And then you can you can shift out of the Ook <coughs> yeah, after that. I, I call my or dog Senor Snook or something. Or names that are not his name anyway. Senor. He, he knows when yeah. I'm talking to him. Fucker. Because no one else is around. Adam Shout out Shout-out to shout-outs. my beautiful wife, Cece, uh, running the... E store, which if uh, we haven't done any shout outs for a while, but uh, shop. www.shop.hoodlabstore.com. Good job. Discount man. code TADS420. Bam. And there's uh, still some stock left. I know you guys are going to, some, some people are going to have to take all their gifts back. Get the money. Get the money. On Boxing like, Day. Nah, well, <laughs> that's not the real reason we call it Boxing Day. <laughs> take all that money and then send it to me. Or send it to the shop at least. Send but it to get the a sh- discount. I don't think you. that's <laughs> well, you know, how the app works. To the family. To the f- it's to the family. It all goes, it all to, goes the to the family. family. No, to um, Nick. To Nick. Yeah, it goes, it goes, goes to Nick. Nick. Yeah. Pretty much all it's goes to Nick. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Nick, the guy who gets everything. You know he does. Um, been having some. He's been he's been a little bit feisty lately. So we're we're having. The, Is he psyched for Christmas? Uh, how does Nick feel about Christmas? We he didn't doesn't even get into that. He hasn't really. We're not going to get him a ton of gifts this year because he got so much crap that we st- we literally have gifts from last year that he didn't even pay attention to. So I'm like, fuck, let's put Rewrap that away. Them. Rewrap that. Boom. Not yep. th- hopefully he's not listening and figuring this all out right now. He's going to be like, <laughs> you did what? You? Yeah. But Grandma's going to spoil him, right? Yeah, she's got some. But you know, at the same time, none of us really want to go and go just give him a million things because then he'll just turn into that little kid. I wanted to get him a five fish. Billion sc- a live fish. You never yeah. answered my message. Yeah, man. fish is not a great idea. He needs a pet. Not yet. He needs, he's, a, he's, he needs a he's, alligator. I remember when my when my first pet fish or, died, or, within like two days of me having it, I was felt like a really bad person. Well, that's why like, you'd have to be on your game. My parents literally replaced my fish. I thought it lived for like eight yeah, years. Yeah, so you're giving Adam <laughs> a problem. Not yeah, yeah, so you want me to go and give a fish, replace <laughs> a fish for eight years now because you had that happen. No, I don't think so. No, the first fish I got, I won them in a contest, and I had to throw the ping pong ball into the water thing. Yeah. I, I got it. I got home, and I was like, now what do I do? You know, I poured him into Shake the thing, that. and then I woke up the next morning all excited, and it was like out on the – just dried up. Like he jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> committed suicide. I jumped out of the water, landed on the table, and dried up. I was like, really? So uh, don't give him a fish. Yeah, don't no know fish. fish. No, I don't want to – no time for death right You're now. A robot. There you go. Sure. Uh, cool. Shout out to my mom out at the farm, holding it down with little Patrick. She's going to spoil him with oh, gifts yeah. in some way. We're or coming something. out there tonight. Candies. Nice. Yep. Did you cut our Christmas tree down from the Green Labs Christmas tree? Is that from the no, farm? No. That's a oh. properly grown. You saw how small the needles are on yeah. that one? Yeah. Come see mine. Mine's got those big old ponderosa. You have like a wild I got, pine? I got the, <laughs> yeah, from straight out of the yard. Just went out in the front yard. Whammo. It's like, that's the way to go get a Christmas tree. It's like 100 feet away from the house. There you go. That's Trade it. up. Tra- yeah. Tra- Are hey, there mushrooms year- underneath it? No. Next year, if you guys want to come out, you know, some one of the, can come to the Adam the Dunn family. family. Adam Dunn family Christmas. Family Christmas, cut your own tree day, day or something. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Like hunt it. for mushrooms, slash mushroom hunt. And on mushrooms, of course, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we may never find the trees. Where are those trees? Those damn trees we talked about. Maybe they'll be happy trees. That's right. There you go. All right. Shout out to my beautiful wife, Reese, little baby Farron, who got her first Hanukkah and is about to have her first Whoa. Christmas. So she's going to have such expectations this year. She's like, so I get eight presents, then I got to wait one day, and then I get a bunch of presents. This is awesome. Not always going to be that way, kiddo, but yeah. this year is a great introduction. When she's, when she's 15 and the presents start costing like $150 a piece. And you have to get eight of them. Spending like nine like grand on Hanukkah. <laughs> no, 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 Hanukkah, Hanukkah, that's not how Hanukkah works. You have to understand my people and our ways more. Do you get like a filter fish? I, no. I what is he has a weird <laughs> obsession with the filter <laughs> fish? I like the word. Hanukkah, you get. I come from a big it. Mormon family and one of, uh, one of my mom's brothers, they had a Jewish celebration one year um, because uh, someone he had married was Jewish and we always took turns, and so we had to buy presents for their family that year. And I remember being, like, 10 years old and being like, they get 
you know, all these presents, and we only get them on Christmas, because I'm all, I've always been bitter because my birthday's after Christmas, so you just get birthday. Yeah, a lot anyway. of people. I have a lot of friends this week. But get uh, presents. Christmas. I remember complaining to my mom about that, and she said quite literally to me, and I've, and it's been confirmed since. Well, yes, they get more, but they're not as good. <laughs> True fact. <laughs> and no, a Christmas present. And that's like Way the better. accepted like status. Like super rich Jewish kids got sick, pre- eight sick presents. You're like, what? You got a Nintendo one night and then a Genesis the next night? That's not even fair. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you kidding me? But, but, but then you don't have any no, expectation I got, of getting that. Let me, tell you about, let me tell you about Hanukkah in my house. I got one night you get like socks. You're like, oh, cool. <laughs> not awesome socks. Not like a Kmart awesome. socks. Wow. You know, you get socks. Then, like, one night, my dad does this thing where he literally brings out this big thing of change. And you get this is a Persian tradition, Persian Jewish tradition. And everyone gets a cup and there's a spoon. And you each get three scoops. Yeah. And then you get more scoops. And if you're good, because it's mixed change, you can get, you know, I've racked up see, over $40. See, in when Europe, you get you, a in lot Europe of you'd crush it. You'd crush you know? it in Europe. Yeah, because their money. Because you'd be like, yeah. $2 coin. But if you suck, you get like pennies and you have like a $5 cup and you're not good. So that's one. That's a real. You you get one. That's a real ingraining uh, something into your brain there. Like, Mm. your scoops suck, bro. That like, that painful noise of the the cup not filling up. Yeah, no, the penny cup. The penny cup. You don't even get to eat latkes if you get the penny cup. You're an alky sleep. Potato pancake, you would call it. That sounds so good. They're so, you never had a potato pancake? Really? Ryan, you can buy them like we're gonna we'll do Hanukkah in studio season. next year. All right, we're gonna. Go All right, that's the okay. overtime. <laughs> yeah, Happy holidays, Happy everyone. Holidays. We'll talk to you New Year's Eve. Chris, can't wait to get the hell out of here. Yeah, later.